It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Well, I've got a big, big show for you because the quarterly report's coming out in just a few minutes. So we've got Jim Dalrymple from LoopInsight.com here. We've got Andy Yanaka from the Chicago Sun-Times. From Tidbits, we've got Adam Angst. They're going to talk about what to look for in Apple's quarterly earnings. We're some surprising news about Apple and the Apple TV, uh, VPN apps in China. It's a big Mac Break Weekly. It's coming up next. Stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Mac Break Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 569, recorded Tuesday, August 1st, 2017. Pocket full of phones. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Zip Recruiter. Are you looking to hire a tech professional? With Zip Recruiter, you can post to 100 plus job boards, including social networks, all with a single click screen rate and hire the right candidates fast. Try Zip Recruiter free at ziprecruiter.com slash twit. And by LegalZoom. August is National Make-A-Will Month. Prepare for your family's future. Visit LegalZoom.com slash prepare today for a free estate planning kit. And by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at RocketMortgage.com slash MacBreak. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Apple. And there's going to be some big news today, but after the show. So I I thought, well, let's bring a panel together who could tell us what could predict what's going to happen with Apple. Starting with the beard, Jim Dalrymple is here from the loop, loopinsight.com. Hi, Jim. How you doing, Leo? Nice to see you. You too. Your beard has been trimmed. You know, <laughs> it, 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 it's summertime. It sheds a little. But the... Are, are you cutting the sides now a little more? You're doing a little, you've, you've got a new style. I, I, I was sitting this morning doing this, so then, you know, <laughs> that happens. I like it. I like it. Andy Yanako, to your right. Hello, Andrew. Hello. To, to, see, you don't understand the rural economy. You, you, there's times when you have to take the, the wool to market, and then there's the time you trade it for more hay and silage. I feel like your sideburns mixed with Jim's beard would make a complete yes. set. <laughs> it's like that's he, a whole person right there. It's, <laughs> we're, no, it's, we're now it's, attempting it's, it's this very, through the video it's a, switcher. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very uh, Karl Marxian sort of thing. Like each beard according to his needs, each beard according to his capabilities. That's how we create our, our, our new, our, our new it, revolution. It's, it's a complete set. And then, meanwhile, Adam Engst from Tidbits. No, don't mix totally him in. <laughs> Nothing. He's nothing. Just, just, uh, he's the whitest guy in Mac technology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I've been getting that since high school. That's good. Was your hair white in high school? No, no. <laughs> I also don't tan. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got the worst tan on the track and cross country teams three years running in high school. Yeah, so, I don't uh, understand yeah. because you're outside all the time running. How do you? And, and it doesn't make any difference. I mean, I do tan a little bit. I mean, you can, do you wear you can a see, big like, floppy you look rim at, hat. Oh, look. Look at my Apple there's, Watch hand. Yeah, there's you know? a little bit. Yeah. It's a little bit. It's but a little it's bit. It's about as good as it gets. That's, that's you know, most, most weekdays at noon. So I don't know why I'm uh, focused on personal appearance here. I, it doesn't matter. <laughs> It's not, it's not well, maybe, uh, maybe because you're the one who's in a nice jacket and a tie and a business dress shirt, and you know you could lord it all over us <laughs> for freelancers that are just in our offices not seeing anybody all day. Well, I'm going to a big event this evening. It's the uh, release of Rob Reed's uh, new book, uh, and he's having a reading in uh, in the Hate uh, today. And so I thought I'd wear a tie in honor of that. Rob Reed, uh, founder creator of Listen.com, which became Rhapsody. Uh, he's married to Morgan Webb of uh, X-Play uh, fame, but he also wrote a very good book a couple of years ago called Year Zero about the aliens and Napster. And <laughs> turns out the aliens... Wait, aliens and Napster? Yeah, or... <laughs> yeah. yeah this, okay. uh, Rob okay. is great because he knows technology, so his books are really, really fun. So Year Zero, the premise was the aliens have been listening to stealing our music for years because <laughs> they didn't have good music themselves and now they owe the music industry. Oh, oh yeah, I've read that. That's hilarious. <laughs> it's, it's hysterical. I yeah. forgot it, about that. Yeah. 
it, it reminds me of that old. Uh, uh, remember the the Voyager record that went out in, uh, yes. attached to Voyager. Yeah. So, the, so there was there was a joke that we we finally got a response from the aliens that it consists of only five words repeated endlessly. Send more Chuck Berry records. <laughs> We love that Barry guy. So his new book is even more timely. It's really good. It comes out today. It's on Audible. It's on Amazon. Actually, I have a little bit of it uh, on, uh, I'm in a little bit of the Audible book, just a tiny bit. Uh, it's called After On, and I haven't finished it yet, but uh, John, who has, there's lots of twists and turns. It's a. It's about Flutter, which is an app. Oh, how, this sounds so science fiction-y. It's an app that knows who you are, who all your friends are, who all your connections are, knows where you are. So, for instance, if you and two of your office mates turn up at a bar at roughly the same time, Flutter knows you're having a meeting and will send you coupons for a particular drink that you might like. Uh, oh, that could never happen here. <laughs> it's a, and, a, it's, and the funny thing is everybody hates Flutter, but they can't stop using it. It's addictive as hell. Uh, there's also artificial intelligence, the Uber of sex. Uh, it's a, it's really good, and uh, so I just <laughs> we, we've had we've had that for for centuries. Literally, it's just we have have that with cell phones. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. We're just we're we're we're, uh, we're creating new markets using technology. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I have to say uh, I haven't finished it. So far, I'm loving it. John, who has, couldn't stop talking about it. And I had to say no spoilers. So there's some real surprises apparently coming. And congratulations to Rob. He's a good friend of the network. And, uh, and that's why I'm wearing a tie today, because we're going to go to his uh, book reading tonight for his uh, debut second. He says, I think I, I think I beat the sophomore slump. And I think he did. <laughs> so, uh, Renee's not here. He's in New York. Not sure why. I thought at first he's not here because every time Apple announces its quarterly results, they do it. They send out an email half an hour before the end of the show, and then they wait till the show's over, and then they do it. The analyst call. And I thought maybe Renee just didn't want to be stuck on the microphone when he could be paying attention to Apple's quarterly results. This is traditionally Apple's down quarter, right? Yeah, they they, they yeah. got too much time between between releases. Yeah. Uh, the usual the usual previous years in which they've had a really good quarter. This time is when they had a really impressive Mac release <laughs> in the spring. That obviously has not been happening for a couple of years now. So we're not expecting. I'm not expecting much. I'm, I'm I don't. I have to admit that uh, the analyst call is not something that I pay a lot of attention to myself. But that's I don't expect really great things for a call at this time. The good news is Renee and uh, Serenity Caldwell transcribe the, the call so you don't even have to but people will be watching with interest market watch and others have pointed out that we can expect perhaps or we can hope for uh some subtle indication of when the next iphone will come out because of course if it comes out in september it'll be part of the next quarter if it comes out in october and there have been rumors that it will not come out until later this time uh, then it would not be included in next quarter's results, and Apple is expect would be expected to, in some subtle way, indicate that maybe next, you know, in a forward-looking <clears throat> statement of some kind, that maybe next quarter will not be the traditional get the traditional iPhone bump. Yeah, and, and they could well, decide to play a little bit of gamesmanship. If rumors are true that they are going to come up with a much more expensive iPhone uh, in the in the fall, they might decide which quarter do we want those higher profits to right. apply to the earlier one or the later one. It's always been bad because well, you get a few weeks of iPhone in the they, in the fourth quarter. Go ahead. Yeah. They should have at least one surprise since we know that it's got all the biometrics and we know what the shape is going to be like. They have to have one surprise left. Right. Well, in fact, that's that's stuff we're learning from the HomePod, uh, yeah. which is <laughs> which is weird because that doesn't come out till December. Yeah. So first of all, a lot of this is coming from the HomePod firmware. How do how are people yeah. getting the HomePod firmware to begin with? They released it by accident, according to according to reports. Uh, we just went out to the developer channels, and anybody who's smart, if you see something, you grab it before it can go away. Uh, and included in all that is all the helpful graphics that says, and here's how you set up your new iPhone with the new HomePod. And there's an outline that actually matches one of the rumored profiles we've seen before. Uh, we've seen uh, rumors of a full screen that does go all the way top to bottom uh, so aggressively that you need an actual little tab at the top in which to put sensors uh like the like it sensors in the camera uh and so that's what we're looking at right now uh, i don't know i don't know if it was so much 
I'm sorry. I'm about to say something I shouldn't say, so I'm not going to say it. And I know that <laughs> I know Adam Angst, You don't report rumors in uh, tidbits. No, we don't. It's it's one of those things where y y all the rumor sites get closer and closer and closer to reality as they as we get closer to the announcement, and it just feels like more information in your head that isn't right. Yeah. You know, so yeah. so we just avoid it until the actual release, and then focus on the details because that's something people can use. I mean, back in the day. It used to be more important to do um, rumor reporting because, first of all, there were many fewer of them. And people had to plan purchasing, that it was a really big deal to know like when something was going to come out so that you could say, OK, I'm only going to buy you know, or I'm buying Macs for my school, something like that. I need to know when this release is happening or I need to know if this is going to be this right sort of thing for me. But the schedules, I mean, the cycles are so set now. For the most part, it doesn't feel useful uh, to people on that. I mean, beyond the, yes, don't buy something right. Don't buy an iPhone right, right. now. Really, well, we know don't. that. <laughs> <laughs> right. But okay, but I so don't have to tell you anything about the iPhone at, 8 to say, don't buy an iPhone right Adam, now. Put your hands over your ears and go, no, 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 because we're going to talk wait, wait, a little bit. Okay. But this is more than rumors. For instance, in the firmware, it's, by the way, Steve Stroughton Smith has been kind of the most for, forefront on this. He's the one who's done a lot of this analysis. But Avery Magnati has posted on Twitter uh, the new HomePod UI sounds. And again, this comes from, the, I guess, from that phony release. Do you want to hear these? <laughs> oh, come on. Why not? Let's hear it. I don't mind hearing it. I just want to report on it. Here's the alarm. Wow. <gasps> <laughs> Sounds like crap in my mediocre $100 earphones. Boy, if you only had a HomePod, you would love this sound. Uh, okay, is that all that we're going to get here? Alarm wave. <laughs> oh, setup is fine. This is Lighthouse. I don't know what that means. Lighthouse might be, uh, you know, on, on the Echo, uh, when you first set it up, or it's got something to say, it does a little, uh, the ring lights up. That might be the... Uh, analogous. Can somebody can, can somebody please make an iPhone like Pong game that uses these as the sound effects? That sounds <laughs> like it's perfect here's for Pong. Set up step target. Here's here's a timer. That's pretty. <laughs> Your eggs are done. Your eggs are done. Your eggs are <laughs> overdone. Your eggs are hard. Oh screw it. Ooh, that's the audio passcode tone. Anyway, I don't know. You're right, Adam. That was worthless. That was a waste of your... That was five minutes you'll never get back. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some iPhone face designs that are kind of intriguing. These are the images you were referring to, Andy. And if you look at these, there's a couple that look normal. And then there's one... Whoa! Hold, hold on there. Hold on. Show me that one again. There's one that has a... It's long and tall... And has uh, a little dry this, <laughs> unless Apple has decided that they want to use the Pixel Two for their uh, home hub. I think this is probably the new iPhone, right? Yeah, it looks like they took part of the design cues off of like Batman's tumbler, where it has those <laughs> extended like forks in the front. Um, so this uh, is is, and, is and, kind and of what others have been doing, right? The small bezel. But in, but in order not to make it super wide, uh, this is what the Galaxy S8 did. It's tall. It's an unusual aspect ratio, and that sort of implies that's what Apple's going to do. And there is this, this notch at the top, which could hold the front-facing camera. I think you. Well, I mean, it has to. You, not, not not only that, but remember, it has to have sensors to figure out: are, am I being is the phone being compressed against someone's right. face or not? Uh, if they are putting in infrared sensors for three D face scanning, that's where that would go as well. Also, the bottom doesn't. The screen goes all the way to the bottom edge of the bezel, as there's no though there is not going to be a mechanical clicky button in there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the, he Steve says uh, that the first one is probably a five S. I mean that's pretty old, yeah, and uh, and then the uh, this new face. So, I, you know, what, anything else you guys think is worthy of talking about? Uh, we're learning a little bit about this next generation iPhone, I guess. I wish the Home Hub were out sooner. I'm I'm I'm, I'm more excited about that almost than the. Uh, you know, it. I, I get a chance to listen to it at, at WWDC, and, and it it was really impressive. Really impressive. I noticed that I am hardly ever using my Sonos speakers these days, 
not they are probably the the better sounding than the speakers I've hooked up to my Amazon dot, but the ability to speak to you just ask for music by speaking is so great. Now you're a musician, Jim, so you might have you know the quality is important to you. Well, I, I I think we've all gotten to the point now where quality and convenience are the most important things. And I think if you ask most people, convenience is is the right. most important. Thing. And there's good yeah. enough, right? Right. Oh yeah, right. good and enough. It, well, that's, that's proven by MP3s. Right. You know, I I have a set of of Future Sonics headphones, uh, in ear monitors, um, that are about a thousand dollars. And th the sound on those is impeccable. It's just great. If I'm just going outside to take a, a, a you know, five minute walk around the air just to take a break, I may just put in my Apple AirPods because they're good enough. And it's convenient. Right. So when you look at the AirPod or yeah, the no, the uh, HomePod and it's convenient, but it also sounds really, really good. Right. So they I, I heard it next to uh, an Amazon Echo and uh, Sonos, one of those, you know, Sonos Play 3 or... It was, a, it was a Play 3. It wasn't the 5. It was the medium-sized one. Uh, yeah, yeah. And there was just no comparison at all. See, if I it's mean, better than the Play the, 3, the that is good enough. That's oh, pretty it was, good. Right. It, was, it was noticeably better than either yeah. of those things. Especially now, if it's sound shaping, which it's going to do, I guess, is... Right. Yeah. So it was it was against a wall, so it was projecting uh, a lot of the volume sideways and front ways, but it was would send some in the back, but bounce it, and it knew that it was there, you know. So it would project the vol the uh, yeah, the music where you cool. are. That's very cool. and if you plug another one in, it automatically talks to the first one, and then they become stereo. So if you are playing a song that uh, that separates channels in the music, then you get this feeling of, of um, you know, depth. And depending on where you put them. If you plug in four of them, do you get quadrophenia? <laughs> I, could, I could not get an answer to that. I told them that, you know, I wanted like six, but I could not get an answer to what happens if you plug in more than, than two. But that's what uh, Sonos did right. Sonos was smart because you buy one. It's a, I mean, Sonos's are expensive, but you maybe the lower the bar by saying, well, one sounds great. But what I found is I ended up buying, and then I bought another one and another one and another one. Pretty soon I had Sonos yeah. all over the house. And I uh, kind of insensitive to the, thousands of dollars i was ultimately spending so apple would be wise to do that to have you know i know you could pair two for stereo right jim yeah 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 and the thing is if you if you set up a speaker and it's on a bookshelf and you decide you're going to have a party outside and you want to take one outside it doesn't just um uh, uh project the, the audio one time it's always sensing where it is so if you unplug it take it outside mm. and now it's out in the, the open it, it will readjust itself to send volume 360 now and <laughs> then when you unplug it and take it back inside and put it back on the bookshelf it will readjust itself again so you know it, it's not like you set it up once and then you're kind of screwed if you decide to move it because you have to go through a process to set it up again you don't it's always looking to see where it is and where it's sending sound. So I have, I'm have i worried about Sonos, to be honest with you. They, were, they had said by early 2017 they would have echo integration. In May, they said they were going to beta test it. It's still not around. And I think they may have missed the boat. As soon as the HomePod comes out, they've no, definitely missed the boat. No, I don't think so. No? Because when you look at what Sonos does... And you look at what um, Apple is doing. Apple will not allow you with the HomePod to plug into your TV system, for, for oh, example. Interesting. So there, there's no way to listen to, um, uh, you know, your DVR shows through a HomePod. Right. Now, uh, maybe somebody will come up with, you know, something that so you can no do with So there's no aux Wi -Fi. jack? There's no auto? No. Uh, no. No. This, this is a, a, a music, I, I would say a music and then... Uh, AI assistant, but I didn't get to, a chance to to yeah. see any of the. They'll AI have to improve things. Siri a lot, though, won't they? If they're gonna, well, I for think some there. people Siri works really well. Well, The Rock. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you've got an editor, it works really well. Yeah. The the thing that I actually I think Apple's doing a good job with focusing the HomePod on music and the audio quality because I think that's what most people are doing most of the time with these yes. these so-called smart speakers. Yes. And we have a Google Home, for instance, and. What we found was the only thing we ended up doing with it was playing music. Because every time we'd ask a question, it would get it wrong or it'd say, I can't do that. Or actually, you would just say, I don't have a question you can answer. I mean, I don't do bar trivia in my house, which is basically only kind of questions it can answer in a useful way. So, you know, it was just it just ended up being a speaker. And then when I actually switched from Spotify to Apple Music, it stopped even being a speaker. So um, it doesn't do anything now. I use my we have echoes all over the house. We have Sonos all over the house. And I just noticed that once I hooked up the uh, echoes, the dots to some good speakers, I just never use the Sonos anymore because it's so much easier to say, well, play this. I also can listen to audio books on the on the echoes, which I can't on the Sonos. So I, yeah, uh, the, it, it is a very natural interface to talk to your speakers and Apple's smart to, to capitalize on that. And if, if that's all Siri does, but do we know, will it work with anything besides Apple music? I not know. only go ahead, right, Andy. go ahead, Jim. All right. No, no Andy, go. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I just realized that I was about to talk over someone who has actually been in a room with one whereas I have not perhaps. Uh, but <laughs> my, uh, so, so far the, the answer to the, the answer to the question that I've been getting, well, what, what if I'm not using it with an Apple product? It's like, well, you have an Apple product that works with AirPlay and okay. you'll just AirPlay to that's it. That's not the solution so, though, right? Because I can do yeah, that with so, Sonos as well, but that's not what I'm using. But that, but but that's okay because Apple's doing something very, very new. They're they're creating a brand new product that tries to uh, t- tries to ma- mark out its own space, right. which is something that I think that they didn't do with Apple TV. With Apple TV, they said, you know, the Roku box. Imagine one that doesn't work with anything that isn't an Apple service initially. Uh, they're basically saying, well, you know that that uh, de- the devices that you already know and you like, we're going to do one, but we're going to stake out the space of really, really awesome music. And it's a, it's an interesting spot to take because uh, they're saying, what if you what if you only spent not that much more than an Echo, like the, the, the real one, but it was such a good speaker that it wouldn't just be good enough. You'd be amazed at how good it is. But they're also taking the space where, oh, well, imagine that you're not. Imagine that uh, your needs for music go beyond what you would pay $129 for for a very very good Google Home or $180 for a very good Amazon Echo. But once you start for people who are spending $350, but it will not consider they will they will not consider. Well, for $350, let's look at what we can get in conventional audio gear. Like, can I get a decent set of speakers that will plug into something that's already a good amp? How about something like uh, the Audio Engine? Uh, audio Engine makes some really nice little tiny, tiny uh, Bluetooth, USB, analog speakers that will connect to anything that you want to connect them to. I've got them connected to my Apple TV in the bedroom, and you get that really wonderful, because they're two separate speakers, and it's not a sound bar uh, that's, t- uh, that's tacked to the screen, you really do get that room that that sense of space inside the room the quality of the sound is amazing uh so much so that it really made me wonder do i have the right sound source hooked up because i can't believe these little dinky what look like the the radio shack speakers that i had when i was in college (laughs) are putting out sound like this and meanwhile outside of uh, it will again hook up with bluetooth it will hook up with usb it has its own dsp uh, excuse me analog to digital converter it will hook up with multiple analog inputs and switch among them so it's going to be interesting to see i think i think apple is going to be very very happy with the people who buy them because uh, that who who bought the the home pod because it's an apple product it works great with all my apple products i have great faith in what apple does and then how they build upon it in the second year and the third year when they've already sold to the converted and now they have to sell to people who are really are comparing this to a Sonos and really are comparing this to that $129 uh, Google product. Speaking of See, Apple I, TV, oh go ahead Jim and then I, I'll... I I really I I have some some Bluetooth uh speakers that I I use uh you know if people come over and I just kind of set it up and we we play music it's a, a UE boom um there's a couple of those and nothing that I have listened to or used or heard so far sounds as good as that Apple speaker. Now, it's going to be a lot more expensive. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. But um, if you're going for convenience and and quality, 
I, I think that they have a really good product here. I mean, you could just walk walk into a room and say, you know, play uh, play some classic rock, and boom, it's going to start going. Or presumably, that's what we <laughs> think will happen. Um, now, my big question is, what else is it going to be able to do? Are they going to go for the AI assistant, or, or uh, you know, the the um, um, the, the virtual assistant like Siri to be able to ask questions to, or, you know, things like that. Can you be doing something else and say, Hey, uh, set up a reminder for well, me. What are, at, so at what, are, so what do people, I'm thinking what I use the echo for, I use it for kitchen timer all the time. Cause there's one in the kitchen. I do, I do shopping, but that's Amazon. So I don't know if Apple will have much to offer there besides creating a, a, a reminder list or a to-do list or a shopping list. Uh, but, do people? I mean, they, do people call Ubers from their Echoes? I don't. Think, I mean, you can't. You can, but I don't think people do. Yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, you can, yeah. and of course, that's a Siri capability. But um, I'm just thinking what capabilities they would put in. I mean, they'd put the whole Siri in. But what yeah. would, what would you use it for? I don't think answering questions. Google Home suppo supposedly answers questions, right, Adam? But af but you don't you get tired it, of asking it questions after right, all. Right. You know, who won the Super Bowl in 1982 yeah. is only interesting to ask, you know, once, once a year. In a while. Or just, yeah. It's not a company yeah. that comes up. But yeah. but I do think that And then you, oh, you, I left out the one thing which is controlling the house, turning lights right. on. Yes. That that is very useful if you've taken the time to integrate it and presumably Apple could have some strategy that makes that really easy to do. Well, yes, and HomePod is going to be a, a HomeKit hub. Right. So that I would like. There, there will be stuff along those yeah. lines. So, yeah, it's. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. I think everyone has their set of three to five things they use Siri for regularly and reliably. And they may not even be the same for different people, but, but people don't use these assistants for a lot of different things. No. They're really pretty no. dumb when it comes well, to we're dumb. what we can do. We're routinized. We, we learn what works and what works, and we use we're that trained. over and over again. We, it trains but, us as much as anything well, else, I know. Right? If it fails, we you never don't do ask that again. again. That's right. right that's why I do mostly it, timers. It's really good at timers. And that's what I use the Apple Watch for. <laughs> same thing. Yeah, same you thing. Know. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But that, so, yeah. That's, well, that's, I, I, I think part of the problem with these virtual assistants um, is, and I, I said this yesterday in, in a, a short post that I did, the problem that I have personally, when I try to use Siri for something and it doesn't work, and then it doesn't work again and again, then I just stop trying. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. after a while, and it doesn't matter if it's Siri or Google or Alexa or whatever it is, whatever assistant you're trying to use. And, you know, it was an article that Ben Beharin wrote about Siri's job. And what what is Siri's job? Well, Siri's job isn't to do web searches and give you an answer. That's not what it does. Siri is supposed to help uh, you know, set reminders and set up appointments and do right. stuff like that. But in early days of Siri, I tried to do all of that too, and it didn't work. Right. Siri may very well be much better at that now, but I've become so frustrated with trying to use yeah. it yep. that yep. I don't even use it anymore. So I could try to set up an appointment like, to to come on the show today through Siri you know, and, and but I didn't. I went right. into calendar and yeah. I just typed it out because it was quicker, it right. was easier, and I'm done. It's very embarrassing. Every time I go to the dentist, one of the few places I make appointments, I <laughs> I'm standing at the counter and every time I go, <laughs> I won't say it. You know who? Hey, Shlomo, set an appointment for, and it never works, and it's very embarrassing because it always works when I'm not in front of somebody. So it's just, and I'm I'm then now I'm that guy. Right. And that's yeah. said, the, for instance, the reminders dates? work really well. Right. So you can say, remind, hey, Shlomo, me. Right. remind me to go to the dentist. I should um, do that. You know, and that will work 100% of the time. Oh, that's You good may get know. some weird weird text, you know, if it right. mistakes what you will remind, remind me. Yeah. But that mm. always works. But yeah, the appointments, so, I, I don't try. I can't. I, I had one, uh, okay. Dave Mark this morning. Um, uh, who who works at the Loop? Dave, very smart guy, much smarter than I am. Uh, Dave said, uh, "Challenge me to start using Siri again and see how it worked." Because he said it works for him just fine. So he said, "Say this and do the the hey uh, girl hey, slow mo yeah um, uh, set a reminder at 9 a.m. Yeah. to say hi to Dave." And it came up and set a reminder at 9 a.m. Zeon today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but at least yeah. you and, remembered. But, the, <laughs> but, but right. at, at 9 a.m., a, a reminder would go off. Right. So yeah. I, I, I said, no, remove that. And I tried it again. But then I couldn't speak. I had to say, set a reminder to say hi to Dave at 9 a.m. You know, so but you're not going to do that when you're out in public. I right. mean, I'll just say fine. I'll just I'll just type it. That's in. that it's is part of the problem is is doing it in public. Go ahead, Andy. You, you, you the, 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 these agents have a lot of the same problems as interacting with real people. Like uh, one, one, one of my one of my one of my one of my best one of my That's best. That's an friends. interesting insight, isn't it? Oh well, I, well, given given how much trouble I have interacting with real people, I think that yeah. set me up very well for relationship with technology. But it's a, 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 a uh, one, one of my best friends, I didn't know this, he had spent like his entire college career plus a couple years being that installing high-end car stereos. And so when I just bought like a new stereo for my car and I was going to put it in, it's, oh, why don't I come over and I'll help you do that? I thought that, okay, well, you mean I don't really need that kind of help. And so then, it's, oh, well, okay, maybe it'll be, then I thought, okay, we'll be, it's a, it's fun to spend an hour or two in the, in the garage with a friend. So he has come over and oh my God, he did the most amazing job installing this. And he was looking forward to doing it because he hadn't been able to, he was like, whereas I'm like the sort of person who just like duct tapes wires <laughs> so they won't hire. He was like doing all kinds of tricks, popping out vents to run wires. So that what, what I'm getting at is that. You have no idea what Google Home can do because there's no way to look at an interface and look at a printed up menu right. of everything it can do. You have no idea that it can like change. You, you, you can say, hey, I'm running. I'm running late. Can you re can you rebook my Amtrak train for a later train? And then it can actually do it. I don't know if it can't actually do that, but that's the sort of thing that that services itself. When you're in someone else's house and you realize that they are doing things like making a change to an appointment on the fly as you say it. It's the sort of stuff that you have to keep playing with it before you realize that, oh, I didn't know that this can control my lights. Oh, I didn't know that it's also I, I can connect it to pretty much anything through if this, then that. I didn't know that uh, I have a Plex media. I have a Plex media server that controls uh, all my media. I didn't know that uh, that Alyosha can I can say, please play this content on this device through Plex and it will actually happen. So that's where that's where it falls short for a lot of people because uh, it is it's designed to be no interface. No, just ask it what to do and it will do it. But you have to know what is possible for this thing to do. Once you once you sit through that first magic oh. show, uh, you really start to take advantage of it. Uh, okay. Well, but and to be it, fair, I mean, Google Home does give you that cheat sheet. And actually, they'll, they'll email you regularly with things that you can say to Google Home. And I look at these things and I'm like, yep. Don't need to say any of those things. So, you know, it, it, you have to see you it find the one, actually but you find being the one, used for something you want. Yeah. Well, that's The Rock versus Siri. That's why they made that movie. It was really... yeah. yeah. As I didn't really realize it till last week on MacBreak Weekly when one of you guys said, That's, that whole point of that is to show you five things yeah. you could do with Siri. And they all yeah, do first, work, but not, so uh, but not, not necessarily, reliably. not reliably but, but, or not with the phone unlocked. Yeah. It's, it's, it's okay and, and, for you. I'm sorry, go and ahead. That, that, that was my whole thing um, uh, yesterday in reading Ben's article. Ben said that Google Home or Google's uh, uh, voice assistant will always be better at general questions, uh, you know, uh, when sure. does this hockey game start or something, because that's what Google does, sir. Right. So it will always be better at that. So maybe it's not Siri. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm using Siri for the wrong things. And that could very well be. So I, what Dave, when Dave said this morning, you know, I want you to, to try some things with Siri again and see how it works because it does work for me. I thought... Okay, I'll I'll do that because maybe maybe I'm putting Siri at a at a disadvantage by asking it simple things that I just assume it will know. You know, when is the next Formula One race on? And Siri, you know, goes back to 1936 and gives me some answer. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, but Google can answer that for me. So maybe it's just the wrong thing. Maybe if I ask Google to set up an appointment, it would just explode. Yeah. Um, so there are there's two basic work. categories for all of these devices, right? There's the canned the canned commands, you know, remind me to do this, set a timer, and those that's just about processing the audio accurately. But then you get the non, you know, where basically the non-canned question where you've got to be able to parse out the interesting content in there and then respond accurately. And all the companies are doing both, right? They want to make it as the canned ones as good as possible and then have the, the non-canned responses be as accurate as possible. And hmm. the second one is the really, really hard one, but it's the holy grail because if you do that well enough, you don't need to put any effort into the canned ones again. 
Yeah, no, that's true. Mm. Let's take a break. Yeah, I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some uh, surprises. Maybe we will have a uh, Apple TV announcement this fall as well, and I'll tell you why we think that. But first, a word from ZipRecruiter, our sponsor today. If you're in the position of hiring at your company, the most important job, I will say this unequivocally, the people who hire your company are making your company. Your comp It's made of people, and the right people can take your company to the moon. The wrong people can drag it all the way down and Every single hire you make can go in either way, right? That's why you got to do it right. And, you know, if you've got an opening, I'm going to say this, and I, I maybe maybe your experience will back it up. There is the perfect person out there somewhere for that opening, somebody who's just going to knock it out of the park. But how do you get to that person? That person could be watching one job board, not another. They, they could be somewhere else in the country. How do you reach the maximum number of people to maximize your chances of getting the perfect employee, Zip Recruiter. Zip Recruiter lets you post to 100 plus job boards, including social networks, with just one click. You post on Zip Recruiter, they post it everywhere. And within 24 hours, you're going to see qualified candidates rolling in. And they're not going to roll into your inbox or your phone. That's good because you're going to get a lot of applicants. They're going to roll into the Zip Recruiter interface, which is designed for this. It it's, allows you to do screening questions. It makes it easy to, they format the resumes in a unified way so you can whip through this, screen out people who are just not going to make it, rank the rest, and hire the right person fast. 80% of jobs on ZipRecruiter get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. You screen them, you rate them, you hire the right person in their easy-to-use dashboard, you can connect with a huge variety of professionals, all kinds, IT professionals, Mac experts, whatever it is you need. You need a graphics designer. Take your company to the next level today. More than 200 million applications delivered and millions of people hired. In fact, more than a million companies use Zip Recruiter today. And if you want to apply, by the way, they also, you can apply there. ZipRecruiter will help you find your future job in any industry, technology, government, business, finance, whatever it is. Just upload your resume and apply with one click. Suddenly, you have access to those million companies who use ZipRecruiter. So it works both ways. It's amazing. Find out why ZipRecruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes. Our small business, medium businesses, the biggest enterprises to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results. The right persons out there Hire them fast. Hire her fast by posting jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. What? Yes. ZipRecruiter.com slash twit for that free trial. ZipRecruiter.com slash twit. If you're uh, you're the hiring person, do it right with ZipRecruiter. Jim Dalrymple is here from the loop, loopinsight.com. You're looking good. Did you lose some weight? I did. You look fit. A little bit. You look fantastic. You know, I, I wonder every week if you're going to call and say, come on the show. So I always try and look my best. <laughs> Damn, now you make me feel guilty. Can we <laughs> get Jim week. on more? Uh, I love having you on, Jim. It's always a thrill. <laughs> always. He's losing weight See, just get, for you, I Leo. Get, I, get, I get tanned. I, you yeah, know, that's I, yeah, you're looking great. I fix great. my beard up. Yeah, you know. looking fantastic. Andy Anako looks exactly the same. <laughs> but he looked perfect to begin with. He always looks good. No, it's great to it's have fine. you, Andrew. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> All right. I, I I understand if I'm on a panel with Adam and and and, and Jim that you would. Uh, uh, no 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 no. I don't, I don't look just, as good as. Them. I that's, love that's you, fine. Andy. I love you. <laughs> I mean, and, I just, you know, I love you and your moo cow. It's just I spend so much darn time in my charity work assisting elderly and, and, and sickly shut-ins. I don't have time to do all the road races and all the exercise. But, yeah, yeah I've been, I'm have been. i sorry. I give too much. I don't think enough about myself. That's, that's every job interview. People ask, what's your biggest weakness? It's always I give and I give and I give. And I just don't focus enough on a little person called Andy. He does it for the kids. That's, that's <laughs> it. He's doing it for the the, the, the elderly shut-in kids. The elderly shut-in kids. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of Benjamin buttons on my on my meals for Will's group. <laughs> <laughs> it happens a lot more often than you think. Actually, Andy's been doing great pictures lately of uh, roller derby in Rhode Island. Just love the Providence uh, roller derby. What is it? What's the name of that team? Uh, uh, Providence roller derby. It's just it's just Providence roller derby. Robert, okay, that's a simple name, easy to remember. Uh, and I obviously is that Serenity. No, that's not. But there's a lot of there's a lot of serenity <laughs> she, she, in there. She does she does a lot of jamming, so she there's a lot of pictures of serenity. Yeah, it's so much fun. 
Her uh, her roller derby name is R two D two Nature. Yes, R two D two Nate. Yes, R two D two Nate. Also here, Adam Angst, runner, <laughs> and I didn't mention Tidbits.com. He's he's the guy behind. He and Adam and uh, Tanya are the people behind Tidbits, the world's longest running Macintosh news source since eighteen sixty three. <laughs> Don't you forget yeah, it. I knew the Mac was coming someday. <laughs> We've been published the first this. issues in hot type. <laughs> <laughs> That's how long ago hot it is. Someday cool. they'll be PageMaker. Uh, are do you use InDesign or one of the, or do you just type it up and put it on the? <laughs> I, I InDesign has no role in tidbits, unfortunately. Although I actually do use InDesign for other stuff, and right. uh, I actually really like InDesign. It's just it's it's one of those apps that I don't know. It's it, it works for me. I, I think I, a lot I of did, Mac users aren't aware of it because they don't do page layout. Yeah, everybody knew PageMaker because it, it was all new and the laser writer was new, yeah. and we all were doing you know. 500 fonts in our newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I was doing, um, I did a bunch of books for Peach Pit and I was doing, I did what's called packaging where I would actually write the book into the layout oh, in InDesign. And so I got really pretty good at InDesign because I was writing in it every day for several years. And then I stopped using it for quite a while. You know, just didn't didn't have any like three, four versions. And then at some point I needed it again for take control stuff we were doing before we sold take control. And, uh, and I had to, I had to start using it again, and my fingers knew what to do. You know, that yeah. suddenly you know, like I was option clicking and control, you know, hitting command. Oh, I'm like, I don't know where this is coming from. I, these keyboard shortcuts are like embedded in my spinal cord at this point. Uh, and I was so surprised to have funny. them come back out on me. Apple has a little bit of a problem. They're kind of dependent on Adobe between InDesign, Photoshop, yeah. Lightroom, Illustrator. I mean... <laughs> We use Premiere, although I have to say that allowed us to move to Windows. Uh, and that is, that's part of the problem for Apple. All of these are cross-platform, right? Yeah. And, you know, I think in some sense the world has changed with Creative Cloud because you don't have this big, you know, ramp up to new PR all the time for right. the latest version of Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign and all that. And so we almost think about it less. I mean, it doesn't hit the media nearly as much as it used to, but, you know, Adobe's raking in fifty nine yeah, ninety nine a month. People who use it rem think about it, remember it. Totally. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, as it, and those apps, you know, it's interesting. I, I watched my son, um, you know, who was used Chromebooks and whatnot in high school. And, you know, he could not imagine why you'd want to use something more powerful than, I don't know, Google Draw or whatever. Right, like, right. no, no, you don't understand. Photoshop is really, really more powerful. You well, know, it's like this isn't even the same ball game. But what's kind of interesting is that uh, Adobe's made noises and seems to be moving in the direction of putting at least Photoshop and Lightroom on the iPad in all their glory. Are they doing the same with InDesign? I haven't heard anything about InDesign. I yeah. would be I'd be surprised, honestly. It just yeah. doesn't you feel like do a it. good fit to me. Yeah. I mean, it's too too text heavy. Right. But we'd be surprised though. Adobe's been doing amazing yeoman's work. They're they're even they're even getting Photoshop on Chromebooks for heaven's sake. Yeah. They're, they they yeah. want to make sure that anything with a with a web browser and a pulse, anything that that's your <laughs> that's Y two K compliant, <laughs> should be able to run Photoshop. And that is the most democratic and wonderful thing I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. but I, I think it poses a little bit of a problem for uh, Apple. Uh, uh, you know, if it's moving to iOS, that's I'm sure Apple's strongly encouraging that, but. You know, it's one of the reasons people who used Macs for years and are looking for more pro products are, sh are switching to Windows because they can. If you yeah. if what you use is Adobe it's Creative not, Cloud, it's, it's not quite so easy. It's, it's interesting. I've, I've been uh, for the, I've been doing an immersion in Windows 10 for the past like three or four weeks. Not sw not switching to Windows. Not even considering switching to Windows. But now just as increase my proficiency in Windows 10 and make sure that I understand what that world is like. Uh, and so my, my, my away team is now uh, a Windows 10 uh, Ultrabook instead of my iPad oh, Pro. Oh, interesting. And, Which one? And so um, it is actually a three-year-old version of the ThinkPad uh, Carbon, Very which nice. I, the, hard, the hardware, I adore this Very hardware. Very nice. I, I'm, and, I've, I've gone all ThinkPad. I don't, it, it's just so nice. Yeah, 
and 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 there is there is a lot of what to what you say that well I've got even Scrivener my favorite word processor there's a Windows version available to it yep. and I because I all my all my uh, photo stuff is in uh, in uh, Adobe Photo products which I only switched to when Apple t decided to terminate uh, Aperture which is a, which a photo a pro photo app that they absolutely loved so there there's so much but then you get into I really really need a version of Omni Outliner for right. Windows if I'm if right. I were to switch I would need to find Omni Outliner for Windows, these two, three, four tiny little apps yep. that uh, Apple doesn't, uh, Apple either knows or hopefully, they, or maybe they don't know how important all of these little independent developers are to retaining people into the Mac OS I hope ecosystem. they know that. I do hope they know that. Well, the, the, quali the quality of Omni Outliner is just impeccable. There's, Omni there, it's, Group it's, it's, is right, it's, vital at this point to Apple's right. continued success. I and think they, and, and, as a and they were. And they were remember they were writing Mac OS 10 software before Mac OS 10 existed because right. they they were primarily next, next step uh, yeah. developers yeah. and so that's I think that that will hold in addition and then you add on the problems of yeah but how uh, how much, how long is it going to take me to get used to Windows as a as a daily driver operating system but nonetheless that there are a lot of people for whom this maybe this is the recurring theme of, of the show but good enough is not an idea that needs to be that should be denigrated. Uh, is if you're if a designer of hardware or software or operating systems is trying to make I'm going to make the greatest operating system in the world and I can write so many different Wall Street Journal articles about how I can prove parametrically that this is the greatest speaker ever and look at the charts of the ease of use and the the, the, the amount of money to, to train people on this but then there are people like yeah but I don't like this aspect of it, and I like the aspect of this on this, on this other competitor's product. And the other competitor's product, it's good enough. I don't, I don't really, I never operate this engine to redline. I, it's, this is just a commuter vehicle, so to speak. Maybe. So I'm glad, I'm proud there's so much performance here, but I don't really access or need that performance. Maybe Apple doesn't care. Maybe Mac OS, you know, maybe, I mean, there's, there's increasing evidence Apple doesn't care. Look at this. This is a company with Mac in its freaking name, Mac Fun. Right, they made yeah. <laughs> for years some of the best little f plugins for your photographers. They're making Luminar, their flagship product, for Windows. In fact, they're moving all the products to Windows. Um, that should be. Sc I would. Well, it's scary only if you really want to preserve the Mac, which I do. But uh, that's a little. I think that Apple. I don't know. I hope Apple's. Well, you have to companies. figure that Apple's ecosystem play is in integrating iOS and Mac and all sorts of other things, iCloud, iTunes. So, but they're getting such it, success it, with the iPhone, Adam, that do they care about Mac OS? Well, they yes, do. I think they do. Um, they do. But I mean, keep in mind, Mac OS is, is mature. There's not a lot of places to go with it. And it's and, and for the users, as we've been saying, it's about the apps. Right. The operating systems are really dull. Less, less and less don't. important. I agree. Right. Yeah. Operating system is not important. The platform or the ecosystem is what's important. And although Apple could be potentially losing some people because some apps are making it cross-platform, they do so many other things in the ecosystem to lock you into the Apple ecosystem, the ease of syncing, the, you know, as at iCloud, yeah. iTunes, just all, all that integration goes a long way to keeping people on the Mac. Yeah. I, I got a little sidetracked here. <laughs> Mac Rumors reader Thomas Jackson, Thomas Jackson posted this in the discussion uh, forum on the Mac Rumors forum. His uh, Some of the movies that he had purchased on iTunes are now available in 4K and HDR. You can't download them in 4K or HDR. It just says it in iTunes. Maybe you can check your iTunes folks and see if some of your movies are suddenly 4K or HDR. Now, since you can't download them now, one has to assume that this is an indicator of something that's been rumored for a while, that there will be a 4K HDR Apple TV sometime soon. Yes? Got to do something I, with it. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Well, I... I think so. If if only if only to make sure that the user interface elements are up to par with what you see built into the TV out of, out of the box. Uh, 4K is actually not quite as important as HDR. Uh, I've been talking a lot more with people who have better TVs than I do and work in these industries, and they they, they keep saying time and time again that their increase in resolution is irrelevant if you have non-Superman type eyes. However, if you have human eyes, you will appreciate the difference in contrast and tonality in HDR. So HDR is going to be 
if, if you want if you want to buy one feature or another, you want HDR. You don't necessarily care about 4K. But yeah, if Apple. It's I, I do think the Apple TV needs a bump. They need some sort of differentiator because right now all it's got going for it is if you want NMC with Apple services, that's the only box that will connect to Apple services. And given that the reason for that is because we are not a lot, we're not allowing any other developers to create uh, uh, boxes that will connect to Apple services. That's not a real point of pride. I, I want, I want this to be the best box that anyone can possibly make. In February, Mark Gurman wrote a, a good article in Bloomberg uh, technology, Apple vowed to revolutionize television inside. Look why it hasn't. And, Quote some statistics. Apple obviously doesn't share its statistics, but some analysts who are saying that Apple TV, well, actually, even Luca Maestri acknowledged it that sales are decreasing for the Apple TV. Um, yeah. eMarketer says that the share market share has gone uh, down to 11.9% in January. That was down from 12.5% in September. So it's dropping rapidly. And then you, if you think about it, why would you buy an Apple TV these days? The only reason is if you're really into iTunes and that's what you need. But there's so much competition out there. Well, I use I use my Apple TV when I'm going to watch Netflix, uh, when I'm going to listen to But you don't music, have to. Jim. But I don't have to because it, even Comcast now has Netflix on right. its X1. Right. You know, so you, you you don't even need that anymore. No. Um, what I think everybody is waiting for, including Apple, is to figure out what they're going to be able to do with uh, both live and DVR. And, you know, a lot of the solutions that are out there now, and there are a lot of them now, um, are good, but they're just, they're not good enough. Yeah. And... You know that that makes. People but this like is the Comcast era. This is the the era of cord cutting. I mean, I think well, in the next three years, it? we're already seeing it. People are going to be cutting off the cable company and turning on over the top services, and they need a box to do that. If it's not built in the TV, they need a box to do that. So well, this is and, the opportunity. Is that what Apple is is no, ultimately going for? Not. Are they waiting yeah. for that? I mean, they've said it's a hobby. Then they said the future of television is apps, and honestly, some of those apps. Uh, the television apps that they have on Apple TV are really impressive. But to keep going in and out of apps, the little TV app that they made is okay, but unless your cable company is part of all of that and you can sign in, you know, that that's not as useful as what it could be. So and, I'm and waiting. Netflix isn't in it. Yeah, I'm waiting for right. that next big step where Apple comes in and says, okay, here it is. This is the ultimate in cord cutting right here. It may be too and, late. What? Well, I don't know if it'll be too late because Apple tends to do things um, in a in a very cool way. And if you look at uh, uh, the, that little TV app that they have now, that is very cool if you have uh, a subscription service that supports it. Right. So it, it's, it's not cool, cool for, for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, so, one look of the at these. This also... is the latest stats from eMarketer. These just came out. Uh, the 168 million people will watch a connected TV in the U.S. this year. That's almost everybody. Roku has 38.9% of the market. Chromecast, 36.9%. Fire TV, 35.8%. Apple TV, 21.8%. So it's, it's, it's falling behind rapidly. And I think that, that who cares about that as a product? But it impacts how much money is Apple spending to keep Apple Music relevant? How much? How yeah. important is iTunes to Apple and its bottom line? I think well, very important. It's huge. It's huge. I mean, Apple TV, or I'm sorry, Apple Music is one of those big services that they keep touting that services is going to, uh, to increase over the next three or four years. A lot of that is coming from Apple Music. So they're willing to spend a lot of money. Uh, to make sure that that continues to happen. So put so, some of that money in the, into the Apple TV. Yeah. Well, I, I so what what we can't seem to figure out is what the strategy is for right. for uh, Apple yeah. TV. And I, I don't know that Apple can figure out what the strategy is. It's a hobby. Is that's, that's all they've ever said. It's a hobby. Well, they get rebuffed at every opportunity from, from the major um, uh, cable yeah, networks. Yeah, they hurt themselves by being so successful selling music, right? Everybody, yeah, exactly. They got all these, yeah. they got all these uh, great deals in the early days of iTunes because people went, oh, Apple, so what? And then they became the number one retailer of music and completely dominant in the music industry. went, oh, crap. Television and movies are 
determined not to follow that path. We're not Apple's too powerful. We're not going to let them gain any more power. Right. Mm. Also, keep in mind that the, uh, changes to net neutrality rules can absolutely change the the game for cable companies. Well, that's now, if they have if they have the ability to simply they, they they can now simply say we don't care what kind of box you have. We don't care uh, how you get Netflix. We don't see Netflix as a competitor. Netflix is now a product that we can charge you extra for. So there's a lot of wait and see happening. Wow. I think one of the things that people are, you know, we're seeing Apple not doing with the Apple TV is extending it in some obvious ways. So, for instance, why isn't there a news app for the Apple TV? Apple could could be filling that with its own content. I mean, just like it does with, you know, with Beats One. Um, it could be linking to other stuff. It could be doing a ton of stuff with that because news can be video as well as 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 text i mean you're not going to read text on your tv but you would watch little clips of things there's lots of that on the internet to link to or to apple could commission their own stuff um you know similarly you don't really see user you don't have user profiles so you know an apple tv is meant to be shared by everyone but it's got all this personalized information so in a family that automatically makes it a little bit weird and you know it does a little bit with home kit but not very much, you know. If they're if they're going to integrate, if you're going to have a HomeKit hub and be able to use Siri to control your HomeKit devices, why don't you have a Home app where you can see how you've set all this stuff up and and potentially be able to you know adjust things from there as well? That that they just seem to have dropped the ball, frankly. So it's not surprising to me that the you know the the sales are going down. Everyone else keeps moving ahead, even if they don't have all of the integration options I, that Apple does. I think Apple would say to that, Adam, no, we're keeping our eye on the ball. The ball being iOS, and everything well, else is you know iPhone, and I, I've said iPad, I've and said everything else is not even on the chart anymore. I've said this before. Mm -hmm. Apple is a huge company that still thinks like a small company. They have one product and it's iOS. Yep. Everything else is an afterthought to Apple, and that's their problem. No matter how large they are, they, the entire company is is devoted to the concept that iOS is everything, and it's very successful doing that. But that doesn't mean that that's the best strategy for all of these ancillary products, which could even do a better job of supporting iOS if Apple puts some in, you know, more uh, effort into them. So if uh, all of us have been around long enough uh, to to understand what I'm going to say here, and and probably the majority of the listeners too, if if we take a point in time and Apple has done something, and then we look three to five years ahead and <clears throat> and follow that along, then we can look back and say, oh well, that's why they did that, you know, two years ago, or three years ago, or five years ago, because they were working up to this feature or this set of features right here. Uh, and that's how far ahead these companies have to think. If we look back three to five years to Apple TV, it doesn't really seem to have moved, you know? And, and that's part of the problem that I'm having. I can't see anything that they did, you know, two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, that is leading to anything big that's going on right now. Yeah, and you can see that in other because, places too. I mean, look at, yeah. look at, look at the iOS app store. That, you know, all the, the very, we've got, you know, oh, developers can now respond to reviews. You know, you know oh, we got a little bit, we got the in-app subscriptions. You know, the, the amount of movement and the, actually the changes in the app store, very, very small since the very beginning. And but, you have not seen movement there. They, they, they said it and they, I won't say they forgot it, but they're certainly not, they're not doing paid upgrades. They're not doing demos. They're not doing all of these things that people have been asking for, for, for years and years and years and years. I think you'll you, you'll agree that in the in the past year since uh, Schiller took over the App Store, there has been more positive changes than what there has been in every year previous to that. <laughs> yes, so, that's true. <laughs> so so Phil Phil really has um, uh, made some remarkable changes to the App Store um, in a very short period of time. Now I know that there's some some obvious things to paid upgrades and things like that that are, are just a nightmare to try and figure out. Um, and demos, I'm sure that there's nightmares there too. But with the amount of changes that have gone on in the App Store in the past year, uh, I'm willing which to is, bet which, that that's going to well, continue. I mean, so what are the what are the changes? We got the, the being able to reply to comments. So we've got um, reply. 
Mm, that's good. Reply is good. That's that's a real technology difficulty one. Um, Did Phil add the, the uh, videos of the, the apps? The app the, videos? Did he? The add oh, you could have different screenshots. Yeah. Oh, the in-app uh, subscriptions. The, the, the that fact was, that that was the, the only real change. The fact that it doesn't take six weeks to get an app approved now. They get but it down to that's days. Different. That's huge. You know, that's, but that's a different situation, right? I mean, that's just saying we had this policy and we've made it so that it doesn't suck as much as it used to, but its policy hasn't changed. No, well, in fact, said, we're going to get to that when we talk about that. Apple banning VPN in China. And that's a very interesting topic. Before we do that, though, Andy, you <laughs> said an interesting thing, and I want to let it go, about net neutrality. And really what you're seeing here is the, the cable companies ultimately are not letting go of the pipe. Well, if it's not going to be, you know, HBO subscriptions, we're going to make it up as an Internet service provider. And we're going to do everything we can with the FCC to make sure that we have an iron grip over all the content that's coming in through that pipe. Tom Wheeler gave a, did an a interesting interview with Fast Company. Uh, t today about um, about this Tom Wheeler, former chairman of the FCC, who did, in fact, uh, in fact, I think he came around. He was from the cable industry, uh, but I think he came around due to the millions of comments a couple of years ago and, and chose Title II regulation of Internet service providers to protect net neutrality. Uh, he, uh, he says, uh, essentially, that it seems to me the people who are championing... Uh, Rolling back those safeguards are the big ISPs, Comcast, AT&T, Verizon, and Charter, and their Republican supporters, and are not the people who have historically stood for a fast, fair, and open Internet. He says, this: everything that's happening, Ajit Pai is not listening to the comments, because everything that's happening is really happening at the behest of the big Internet service providers. Uh, that, that's kind of what you were saying, Andy, and I have to say, I think that's yeah, an important uh, point. Yeah, I mean, a absolutely. Uh, subscriptions are coming down, are going down. The way that people actually experience uh, entertainment is completely changed from the way it was when any of these people entered this industry, even if they only entered it in the 80s or the 90s. Uh, and they're not going to let go of an opportunity to say, well, if we're going to, if we can no longer be the 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 a company that charges you an arm and a leg for access to ESPN. And the way that we do that is by making you buy 500 channels you don't want as part of a sports package. Then we will be the company that charges you an extra $30 a month to make sure that if you choose not to subscribe to the 500 channel package, if you want to stream ESPN at any kind of a quality, you are going to, you're going to, uh, you're going to, you're going to want to uh, pay up through us. But uh, it's, it's, <clears throat> I mean, it, it really is. If, uh, I don't. I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, smart enough about the internals at, at Apple to know whether Apple's being incredibly shrewd and intelligent by saying that these are shifting sands that we're trying to build a TV business on. Let us wait f to see like where is the actual bedrock we can bound on. Let's wait for things to settle down for, or whether this is just in the category of. We like this market. We don't particularly care about this market. We don't really see this as something that is an opportunity for us to do the things that we love to do. So we are going to wait to see where the parking spots are. And then as soon as we see an open space, that's where we're going to go in. But we're not going to force our way into this. We're not going to try to define ourselves as the greatest solution for this, uh, especially especially because, again, there's so much competition i i don't uh, the 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 mantra of good enough there are people that will just happily they get a new samsung tv or they get a new even a, a bargain tv off of an amazon sale and does it have hulu built in yes does it have netflix uh, in built in yes okay why, why would i want to why, why would i want to buy a box even if the apple box will be a lot more i'll give you a lot more privacy it will be a lot easier to use and will provide more opportunities down the road uh, that they can't even imagine right now but again they see a, they see a netflix logo and they don't have to change from hdmi 1 to hdmi 3 to get to it that's good enough for most people uh we're going to take a break come back there's lots more to talk about andy anako chicago sun times always a pleasure Adam Engst from Tidbits, so good to have you. And, of course, from The Loop, it's Jim Dalrymple. I just want to read one last quote from this interview. Tom Wheeler, former chairman of the FCC, talking to Fast Company. It looks like the FCC is standing up for four companies, when you really get down to it. There are four companies who are really the major beneficiaries, Comcast, AT&T, Verizon, and Charter. They provide the vast majority of high-speed Internet in the country. Four companies. There are a 1,000 companies who are the early stage innovators, the kind of folks who bring opportunity and create new jobs, who will have written a letter to the FCC, I did, saying their businesses will be threatened by the elimination of Title II in order to increase the power 
of the big four. This is just an absolutely startling comparison. Four companies are going to get bigger and more powerful at the expense of a thousand startups and tens of millions of consumers. That is so out of whack as to be shameful. Bravo. We thought, we thought Tom Wheeler was an industry spokesman. No, he turned out to be a champion for a free and open Internet. A good interview. Highly recommended. We're going to take a break. Come back with more. Our show today brought to you by LegalZoom. August is here. August 1st. Can you believe it? What happened to the year? It's National Make a Will Month. Now, I've talked to you often about LegalZoom, how we used it to set up our LLC and our trademarks. It's great for business, but it's great for families, too. Time to take control of your family and its and assets, preparing for your family's future. If you do one thing this summer, I'm sure you'll do many, but if you do one thing this summer, maybe it's time to get that estate planning kit. We got one. Uh, Lisa got one just to do the whole thing. It's, it's beautiful. You get this great kit. You can go to LegalZoom.com slash prepare to get the kit free. You will get, by the way, with it, helpful information, but also LegalZoom discounts and everything you need to stop procrastinating and start preparing for your family's future. Even if you do nothing more, get this kit. It's designed to provide the tools you need all in one place. Whether it's a will or a trust, there are a variety of instruments you might want to use. You get special LegalZoom discounts. You'll get an estate plan checklist. There's an ebook. Lots of information. Now, remember, LegalZoom is not a law firm, and that's what's so great about LegalZoom. You know, they, they, they don't make $350, $450 an hour on you. <laughs> that's why they can offer this free estate planning kit at LegalZoom.com slash prepare. But they also, and I love this, if you, there are times you need to ask a question. You need to talk to a lawyer. And they have created a network of attorneys, independent attorneys in all 50 states who will work with you at a flat rate. It's not by hour. Very affordable. This works so well for us. I want you to try it too. Legal Zoom, National Will Month for August. LegalZoom.com slash prepare. No obligation. No salesman will call. It's just a great resource to help you protect everything you care about during National Make a Will Month. LegalZoom has been around for more than a decade helping families, helping businesses, and they're ready to help you. LegalZoom.com slash prepare. Even if you've got a will, there are lots of things to think about things change maybe it's time to update it legalzoom.com slash prepare get that for free today ah we continue on with the mac break weekly uh what did i say i was going to talk about now I, I forgot about it uh but i thought, thought it was important damn it <laughs> <laughs> remember i said i was going to talk about that later on oh china yeah so this <laughs> is relevant to the app store and this is a, I think this is a problem, but I want to know what you think. I think this is a problem when you say, as Apple has, no, we are going to be the sole one and only uh, source of apps on the iPhone and the iPad. We are going to vet all the apps. That's fine in the context it's been in, but now you're in China and the laws of China are changing. They're going to change in Russia. In fact, they just changed in Russia. In February, VPNs will be illegal in China. They are already illegal in Russia. And now, because you're the one and only app store, Apple's in this position, they have removed all the VPN apps from the app store in China, prior, you know, preparing for this new law in February. I think that they've been put in an awkward position. I think there is a solution for Apple, which is to open up apps, uh, iPhone for sideloading. But maybe it's too late to do that. That would be such an obvious <laughs> thing. Yeah. No, I, 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 this is one area where I think that Apple has a moral obligation to... I'm, I'm sure. Th I'm sure that this was there were the discussions internal. I'm sure that they were really sweating this out. But the power of a government to control its people through its de denying it access to VPN encryption and uh, anonymity, it starts off with isn't it kind of a na nasty thing that the government is doing this? But also, it's when you when you're talking about a, a country like Russia where journalists get killed. Not they get harassed, not that, hey, they want to, there's an investigation going on, we'd like to act, have access to a phone. Journalists straight on get killed. And these people need to have the ability to speak privately with one another to avoid getting murdered by their own government. You have uh, even worse governments in Turkey where, again, they will, it's, it's not even, oh, well, gosh, this person was found hanged in a prison cell or, gosh, they were beaten by, by 18 different blunt instruments and we were going to rule this a suicide. In Turkey, you have journalists who are getting arrested and then killed. And you have political dissidents who are getting 
disappeared and killed. And Apple, I'm, I hope I'm not overstating this. I hope I'm not making this sound like hyperbole, but Apple has to decide what side of this argument they are on. If it doesn't matter if means I think that in China that's it's 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 uh, it's un, it's unfortunate, but they're not noted for the same sort of stuff that's going on other other, other places in the world. But they're just going to have to sit, at some point they're going to have to be uh, face of uh, face the press and say that well yes we decided to not play along with this small government that doesn't have a whole lot of power over us where it's not a big market, but we decided that when this huge but this huge opportunity of this huge market opened up for us we don't want to risk losing access to that market so i, I, have, well, I have deep problems with apple agreeing to not to turn off what are what can be life-saving apps for a great number of people that have very very little power in the countries in which they've chosen to live so i i agree entirely with andy in terms of the moral side but from a practical standpoint if this is the law of the land no, they have do no they choice. have a choice by having but this is the slippery slope that you create by saying only through us can you get an app now apple oh, and this is the precisely yeah precisely. this is no, the email not, they I, sent to uh, one of the vpn uh, apps this is express vpn ready yeah. to notify your application will be removed from the china app store because it includes content that is illegal in china once you're doing business in china you, and by the way, it's not going to just be China. It will be Russia in November. Yeah. It will be Venezuela. Yeah, yeah. It will be Poland. It, it, we're sure. seeing authoritarian, no, yeah. it will be Turkey. Authoritarian regimes emerge all over the world, and Apple is going to have to agree to do what each one of these regimes says. Yes, they right. will. And because it is the law of the land, there, right. a, Apple, Apple is not a government. It is not a military. It can't go in and say, we're, we're going to just ignore the law of the no, land. No, Google they didn't either. Google well, left. They just they left can, China. Well, they left the they market. Can, they, can, they can say that we're not going to participate. We're not going to have an app store in China then. Right. We have close to, we are close to being valued as a $1 trillion company. China is a huge market. But, or let, let's talk about Russia. Let's talk about Turkey where it's not maybe quite or so. Or do what uh, Android does tempting. where it's sideloading. They allow sideloading and saying, you could always do it. Uh, I'm saying I'm saying that they have the uh, they don't have the option of violating the law of the land, but they do have the free and open choice not to do business right. in a land that is making them do stuff that, if in their estimation, is going to lead to people getting killed, getting murdered. Again, for me, VPN is I'm in a coffee shop and I don't want my password being being jacked by some kid. In other parts, it's you will be killed. If people know who you're talking about, the people that you're talking to will be killed. This is a serious problem. And Apple, at the at the very minimum, needs to speak about here is let's walk us through why you decided that playing along with this as a as a broad principle yeah, is an I OK agree. choice. And is this compatible or incompatible with that hippie, touchy feely, peace, love, dope? Oh, we just we're here to improve the world, improve things for humans everywhere. And again, if people are getting killed because of access to software or lack of access to software, they at least need to not be tone deaf and say, here is how we don't feel as though we are being hypocrites in saying this. I'm not saying they are being hypocrites right now, but I'm saying that at scale, at the scale at which they operate, they can't simply send notices to developers saying, oh, by the way, we're pulling your VPN apps. They have to speak at a very high level about what this problem is for them and how they intend to navigate it. Because the next, what if, what if the next thing that Russia does says, oh, by the way, we passed a law that says that you can't have a phone with any encryption on it, and we have to be able to have on the fly that unannounced backdoors into it. It's probably so, going to happen in Australia and England. I mean, that, and so that's just yeah, around yeah. the corner. Yeah. yeah, Apple has to have a policy, and Apple has to state that policy. So Google does not have a Play Store in China at all. Google doesn't play in China because remember, app, uh, Google was asked by the Chinese government to censor, uh, you know, res results of its search, and Google, instead of doing it, said no. We're going to redirect all Google.cn searches to Hong Kong, and or Singapore, and we're going to, and we're just not going to do business in China. But if you have an Android phone in China, and many do, there are you can download from there are other stores, and you can download, for instance, a uh, free browser from the not-for-profit group Great Fire. That has a VPN built into it. Um, so, you, you know, I mean, there are alternatives in China, but it, it, 
I don't. It's a very difficult position that uh, Apple's in. I'm, it's, I'm not it's terribly hard. That. But, yeah. but here's a question that I have also, which is that we're talking about apps in the App Store right now. But let's face it, Apple is tremendously reliant on China to build iPhones and right. iPads no, that's and, a good point. Yeah. and Macs. And, it and, wouldn't necessarily know, just be leaving this app, right. iPhone I mean, sales behind. It might be leaving iPhone manufacture behind. Right. I mean, it seems to me that this is a, I mean, again, I agree entirely with Andy that this is, you know, Apple needs to be totally upfront about why they're doing what they're doing and what the situation is because it is hugely problematic. But at the same time, you know, they do not have an easy option. You know, even no. with side loading, potentially, they could be, you know, by, by allowing the side loading, they could be breaking Chinese law. You know, I mean, just yeah, by, no, I agree. By, you so, may, so, people so, may not remember, but in January, yeah. Apple removed the New York Times from its app store in China. Dangerous stuff. I, the great I, I, I agree. I agree the stuff isn't easy, but as parents teach their children – Morality and ethics are what you do when the right answer is by far the hardest one. Yeah, that's right. When it's easy, that's no big deal. Well, there you go. I don't know what I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> and, 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 to be, and to balance things out and be fair, it's easy for Google to do what it did because it doesn't manufacture lots of stuff in China. It, as long as its ads get through wherever right. they're browsing, that's yeah. they still yeah. make their money. Yeah. Which is not to which is not to downplay this the importance of the choice that they made, but. Again, it's it would be a very difficult thing for Apple to do, but once again, there's going to be there's going to be a time at which it's going to seem really stupid that at no point has Tim or anybody posted a letter. If they can, if they can, if Apple can post a letter explaining why a bad antenna design is perfectly good, if they can, then they can definitely post a letter <laughs> saying, "Here is our policy regarding how governments might try to control its people through an app store that we 100% control." The uh Apple and Android Google stores have pulled hundreds of scam financial apps mm. from the store. These apps used primarily, I guess, in the UK. Uh, they're in they're fraudulent online trading sites, mm. and people are falling for it and have lost. Uh, well, according to this investigation by the Independent in the UK, uh, quite quite a bit, millions of pounds. Um, to these apps. So here's an app called, for instance, Binary Uno. And uh, she needed money because her, her pension wasn't big enough to live on. So she invested 200 pounds of the company. They called themselves brokers. They said she was trading on the performance of gold and stocks. She ended up putting almost her entire life savings, 40,000 pounds in, and had a zero account balance one month Ugh. later. Basically, they stole every penny from her. Um, Apple could Apple could pay that back. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> they have that kind yeah. of money. Well, the the good news is they're removing these uh, these phony trading yeah. apps. Both Apple yeah. and Google are removing them from the. Uh, so from what? The are, I mean, this is a problem that in general I, I obviously know much less about the Google Play App Store, but or the Google Play Store. But uh, we've been researching word processors and various other apps for some tidbit stuff recently, and it is amazing the number of apps that are just crud. You know that they're 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 probably le quote unquote legitimate apps you know, that they they are probably what they say they are. But if you go search on word processors in the Mac App Store, for instance, you will find tens of word processors that you have never heard of from Chinese developers that all have exactly the same description. Yeah. And you know, I mean, they're, they're, it's they're clearly I mean, I imagine they're like open office clones ports, and I imagine that they're just basically doing shelf space stuffing where. They can get these things in because they are nominally legitimate apps, but every one of them has a slightly different name, maybe has a different icon, um, and it's all the same stuff. And so it's just it, the App Store, at least as a, more and a little so on the Mac App Store side from what we were looking, but uh, has gotten to be problematic if you even want to find something in it. Yeah, that's absolutely true in the uh, Android Store, probably even more so. I'm kind of surprised... <laughs> Though that Apple hasn't done a better job of curating its store since it really does tightly control it, doesn't it? 
You would think. Mm, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're pretty good at, high, at, at uh, using their editorial control to promote apps that go above the, hey, guess who just came back from a two-day weekend at a Ramada Inn that promised to teach me how to write an iOS app right. for only $48. Uh, but yeah, that's the... Uh, that's, the, that's the most difficult thing. I think that's the part of the responsibility of people who are journalists and people who are writers and even people who are fans to make sure that the good stuff gets floated to the very, very top. Because most people, I, I think that I shop for apps uh, the same way that most people do, which is to just plug a few keywords into uh, mm -hmm. in, into the search bar. And uh, even when I know oh. what I'm looking for, it's like Pokemon Go. And there'll be like a, a Chinese remote control TV app <laughs> That knew that people are searching for Pokemon Go, and so it's going to try to... It's uh, terrible, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's hard. We need humans. We need humans. Earth re needs re humans. Regretfully, we need humans. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Apple has, uh, re as we've reported many times, it happened last year, purchased Carpool Karaoke, a segment that appeared with uh, James <laughs> Corden on The Late Late Show. Uh, and they have produce 16 half hour now the carpool karaoke on the james corden show is short <laughs> but they've made a half hour versions of this i i don't know how this will play but they're gonna they're gonna come out uh, uh on august 8th in one week the first carpool karaoke and we have a trailer would you like to see it <laughs> let's play it on the road again so I, I'm going to rely on you hipsters to identify. That's Michael Strand. I recognize him. Well, I am at the very start. There's Coden, Gordon, and actually, that's interesting. They're not just doing, uh, they're not just doing uh, musicians. They're doing uh, celebrities. So wait a minute now. Okay, will is that Will I Am in the back? That's Will. That's, that's, that's and that's, that's the, uh, this is uh, oh this is the uh, app Planet of the App people because that's Jessica Alba, Will I Am, yeah. and uh, and Gwyneth. So they're just. This is a little cross promotion then for the other show. Now Michael Strand, I recognize, footballer and uh, host on uh, G uh, GMA. Don't know who these two are. Uh, that the guy on the left, I recognize. Yeah, I wonder, a, a woman in antlers. She's green. Uh, there's uh, what? Uh, oh, the, 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 the you know uh, girl on Alicia Keys. Uh, and then I don't know who that is. And Metallica. Then, Metallica. That's Metallica. Oh yeah, Metallica. there's James. Metallica and Billy uh, Billy Eichner. <laughs> Who's this? Billy Eichner. Bill Bill, Bill Eichner. Okay. Bill Eichner. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, of course I recognize. He, he shouts at people on the sidewalk, and it's very, very, very funny. You, you rarely see Lars Ulrich in the back seat, but there he is. And I'm just going to presume that Kirk is is behind Eichner, and of course they let uh, James drive, and he should drive because he's a car fanatic. He's got a lot of cars. Now we're in a helicopter. And other famous oh God, people. Yeah, see, this this is what I was worried about. And so the, the great the great thing about the Corden Show is that I like the conceit of the Corden Show, which is it's all in it really, a car. It's all it, it never leaves the it, the only conceit is that they have to come up with some excuse of why they why you need they, they needed to have the carpool with right. They're with, picking with them the all up, right? Yeah. But they get they get rid of that in like ten seconds, and it really the it's it's the intimacy of two people alone in a car. There's no crew in there. They're all trailing behind other cars. And people letting their guard down because it's such an unexpected place to be. Uh, there is a, a there was a, 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 a our, our friend uh, Robert Llewellyn, I think was the first one to do this sort of thing. They did a, a show called he just it was just called Carpool, where it was an interview show. I've been on that where, show. I love that he, show. Me too. He, yeah. he literally gave me a ride from the airport <laughs> in Gatwick. <laughs> To my he hotel, that. and we did a show. Yeah. And, and and what I was worried about is that it's going to be oh well oh God, you know what you know what I've never done before I I feel like I should get a sauna. Would you like to get a sauna spontaneously? <laughs> oh look, there's a place to get a sauna. Like like uh, Jay Leno's Garage is a wonderful show because it's just him talking about yeah. cars on YouTube. When it becomes the CNBC show, I it know. becomes. You know what? Why, why don't we take this out for a ride? You TV know what? producers, I, I swear to God, they don't believe yeah. in the, they don't trust the intelligence of the audience. They think, oh, they'll get bored. Here we are in Billy Bob's Texas with a mechanical bull that's been changed into a dragon so that uh, Arya Stark and Sansa Stark, I don't know the actors' names, can ride it. Oh, that's hilarity will ensue. Then we've got some sort of pedicab <laughs> race and they're in, uh, you know, I don't, this is, you know, Apple's done such a bad job. With Planet of the Apps, I fear for what is going to happen to Carpool it, Karaoke. It could, be, it could be good, but this doesn't get me excited about 
No, <laughs> now we're in a laundromat person. with a choir and the. Oh. James Corden in the back seat. There you go. Yeah, Corden appear makes some appearances apparently. Also, Corden is awesome. He's such a great host. So you no, know, but and, but, and he, just, but it just, looks like these are unhosted. So instance, we've got yeah, Sansa so. and Aria, and uh, and Aria's driving. So it looks like these are unhosted somehow, which is not it's a, a self, good it's, idea. It's a self-hosting car show. <laughs> it's, 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 that's where that's where Apple's been doing this technology. So that if the autonomous all, all, hosted, all, autonomous all of, of Apple's car self-driving car technology has been so that these celebrities who are not used to driving themselves anywhere can operate this car safely. Wow! <sighs> 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 uh, I think I have to wash my hair. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Apple, you know what? They got the money to hire some good. They have hired some good people. Maybe they'll. See the error of their ways. I don't know. Maybe and maybe it'll be great. You gotta love Vic Gundotra, who uh, worked at Microsoft, then went to uh, Google and was in fact the interface on Google Apps to the iPhone team at Apple for many years. Then was picked to run Google Plus, Google's nascent social network. Gundotra left. He currently is at a company uh, that makes a actually a very cool EKG device, Cardia. Um, but apparently he just thinks that no one should use anything but an iPhone for photography. And he posted this view embarrassingly on Facebook. So he, this is basically, I think, Vic <laughs> throwing shade at Google in more than one way. He says, forget Android, just get an iPhone 7. Look how great these pictures of my kids are in portrait mode. You don't need a DSLR anymore. And then it's yeah. fun to read the comments, the people... Who, you know, like Scoble say, yeah, you're absolutely right, Vic. And then the people point out, you know, the Pixel probably is a better camera. And by the way, how you're going to, the iPhone is number 12 in the DxO Mark ratings. How are you? <laughs> There's plenty of reasons. And then some, then somebody's pointing out, well, see the smudge in the hair with the portrait mode? That that looks terrible. And on and Pixel on. Pixel peepers. On. Pixel peepers. Damn them all. You, Pixel but peepers, you. Yeah. I think I, I I think Vic's prematurely uh, saying it's the end of uh, the DSLR. But is he right about Android photography? No, that's that, that's just dumb. I disagree with that one hundred percent. Apple, uh, the I, I still think that the iPhone is the best camera, simply because and I, I I need to point out that I will go out often with four or five different cameras because I'm testing out different things and I need to I use the iPhone 7 or the 7 plus sort of as in the mix as part of the things to compare to and the by far the phone that gives me the least amount of trouble where I have the decision to make to take a picture I I, I, I lift up the phone I press a button and a second a split second later I have a picture no other phone does a better job of that than the iPhone and that's one and because it's, it takes such consistently good results I think that it is the best camera however I did a this is timely because a couple of weeks ago I did an experiment uh, I once again took out a pocket full of phones including uh, this uh, including the Asus Zen phone that costs all of like the uh, costs like a, a pittance of, of money uh, the new Samsung uh, Galaxy S8 uh, another phone plus I had the iPhone the, the latest iPhone plus I had my uh, Panasonic Lumix LX10 which is a very very nice like uh, pocket phone it's not a pocket camera it's not like a cheap blister pack you get at the drugstore it's a very very it costs about as much as a phone and so i was doing my usual walk around boston taking the same tourist photos with all the six cameras in my pocket and things are automatically uploading to google photos and i realized there was an opportunity here because all the stuff was automatically being uploaded and it was the exact same picture, the exact same framing. The only rules I set for myself is that I can use Zoom, but all other choices have to be done by the camera. It has completely automatic. So I can't, I, don't, I wish this were brighter, I wish this were just directly uploaded. And so I realized that now that this is all in Google Photos, I don't know which camera took which picture. So I decided to go ahead and say, I'm just going to choose the one I like best of each of these sequences, put them into a separate album. And then once the album is complete, I will then look to see which camera took which one. And I was expecting... Uh, a mix of things. I was certainly expecting the this the Galaxy S8 to do really, really well. I was expecting it maybe to do a little bit better than the iPhone because it came out later than the iPhone. The iPhone is last year's technology. The S8 is the later technology. Almost every one of them was taken with my daily carry phone, the 2015 Nexus 6P. Wow. Almost all Not of even them. even the latest Android phone. 
not even the latest one. And almost all of them, because and the and because the other detail I omitted is that the other rule is that whatever the default camera app comes pre-installed on that phone, that's the phone that that's the app that I'm going to use. So no, no, I can't use like a raw Lightroom photo. Then that that's unfair. And almost all of those pictures. The camera decided to use the uh, Google the Google Camera Apps HDR Plus uh, mode, which is the most lifelike and the most powerful uh, HDR mode uh, HDR app I have ever used on any phone. Now you can tell because sometimes it will take a few seconds for it to finish building this picture, and there are times where I'll be taking like bursts of photos, and then I wonder why is the phone in my pocket so warm? It's because it's still processing all these pictures. But it goes to show it's, it's this this the the uh, intelligence from this isn't that oh well the iPhone is no longer the best phone. It's that it really doesn't matter what the lens is like and what the sensor is like, and even to a lesser extent what the image processing is like. If you have synthetic, uh, if you have, you have synthetic processing that will be able to take whatever the hardware can do and fake a better lens out of it, that's probably more important than whatever is built into the camera. It's it was I was not expecting that. That was not leading myself towards any conclusion, and I am shocked as hell. But that. There it is. I'm, I'm I'm pleased to say that the phone that I paid three hundred eighty dollars for uh, at a discount at a Black Friday sale <laughs> happens to be my favorite camera phone because it's going to save me seven hundred dollars. You see, being a, a non photographer, which I am, I suck at photography. I I'll sit down and play music all day, but photography is not my thing. Literally, that saying the best camera is the one that you have with you is great for me. That's true, but that's true yeah, because that is true. I you know I have my my iPhone. It doesn't matter how good that camera is. It's going to come out blurry when I shoot it. Um, and it, it's, it's not going to look good, but it's it's mine. It's something I have, you know, of whatever. Also, also known, as, also known as the Heineken filter. <laughs> yes. Well, the fact that I can't see the screen anymore because I need glasses, uh, that, that doesn't help. Yeah. So I can't tell if it's blurry or not. Well, I let me put this in a way. In, let me put this in a way. Would you... It's true. The best guitar you have is the one you have as well. But if you could sure. strum a Fender Stratocaster or your iPhone, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't use. Yeah, I mean that's that's obviously <laughs> a great. I wouldn't do that on my iPhone. Right. But I'm just going to put this uh, in terms you'd understand. There's a lot of pictures you wouldn't take on an iPhone either. Well, see, Especially I, if I don't. Got the I don't have up. another camera, so that right, is yeah. the camera that I will. Yeah, but do you ever take. notice like you'd want to zoom? Like you're not gonna take yeah, it on your African yeah. safari and take a picture of a lion that's this big. <laughs> no, <laughs> <they're>, <laughs> cute little lion, <laughs> cute little lion out there, oh, it's tiny little lion. So there's some things you you can't. I'm, yeah. You know, I don't yeah. know why Vic posted that. It almost feels like he's just throwing shade at Google because he used to work there and now he doesn't like them anymore. But especially posting on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's a little bit obvious. But yeah, I mean the, the the purpose of the purpose of a camera is to take a picture of the thing that you want to take a right. picture of. And sometimes of the iPhone is the perfect camera. And so, well, not, I, that, again, that comes back to that's why I think the iPhone is the. If I have to say which one is the best, that's why I say the iPhone is the best. Right. Uh, I could I could take better pictures with my Olympus OMD EM1, a photo that a camera that I'm absolutely in love with. But if it were, I have to admit that if I happen to bump into George Lucas at like an airport. Yeah. And I've got a five-second yeah. opportunity For to get selfie. a picture of me with George. There's nothing it's better like I, than the iPhone. I, 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 and I have, and I well, not only that, but I, I, my LX10 will it absolutely kicks the iPhone's butt. Obviously, yeah. yeah. But that's the Panasonic LX10, which is very nice. The, point Panasonic, the Panasonic LX10. Yeah. But the thing yeah. is, the iPhone is optimized towards we will get you a decent, recognizable yes. picture of you with George Lucas. You will not have to like. Call a friend of a friend of a friend. See if Alex knows anybody at Skywalker Ranch that can say, hi, I tried to fancy pants it with this $800 pocket camera and I had it. I forgot I had it on the wrong mode. Oh, so it didn't that. actually focus. I've totally done that. Can, can, yeah. I, can, can we meet at the airport yeah. again to get this yeah. picture again? I've totally so that's, done that. that. That's what most people are, 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 are want out of a camera. They don't and, necessarily want the best picture they can get. They want a decent picture. And, and the iPhone will it, always deliver that. This has this camera phone, in not just the iPhone, but camera phones in general, have killed the point and shoot market probably. I mean, this yeah. this for most people, this is the camera they have is that is their phone in their pocket, and it's plenty good enough. So yeah. I, I agree with that, <laughs> but I wouldn't agree with the stip that anybody's saying throw away your DSLR uh, because I, now you've got an yeah. iPhone. Although I think part of the strength is it is dual lenses. Now Google is rumored to be doing dual lenses. I think almost cameras in future will have dual lenses. That's one way to solve the zooming 
issue and also improve the i think what vic was really saying is the power of and we all agree on this the power of computational photography yes. yeah that's which pretty is, amazing which is which is what I got out of that Google Photos yeah. uh, experience. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's it also it also the thing that really got me to stop even publishing reviews that try to do a side by side by side by side is to remember that the if you were to take any photo that your mom and dad took, I mean, I, I mean, people who are 10 years younger than me that their mom and dad took on film. Any phone can even like the most midland range phone camera will take a picture oh, that yeah. kicks the butt of that little cartridge 110 well, system. Remember we had the Instamatics with the flash years. cubes and then you wouldn't get the picture. You wouldn't even know how the picture came out until a week later because you had to go to the one hour photo and <laughs> drop it off. And then you'd yeah. get prints and the prints would be terrible. You'd throw away half of them. I mean, we've we've come a long way, baby. Nobody's yeah. denying so, that. Yeah. So my parents, in fact, uh, I forget the camera we had, but it was one of those things you'd take holiday photos, you know, the, the very you know, Halloween pictures, things like that. But you didn't use up the roll. So you had to, in fact, wait until you'd used yes. up the roll right. to, to get them. I mean, and, so it was like and in September, you get pictures later. from last October. Yeah. Yeah. Well, remember yeah. that costume? That was great. That was great. <laughs> yeah. No, it's we've come so far. Yeah. I, it is magic. I I do want to give my my parents some credit for being pretty decent photographers. They uh, they <laughs> took. I have well, don't show this yet. I have to log in. But they <laughs> they took. Uh, they had they had slide. Um, they use slide film, and we we recently digitized all of the pictures, and they actually came out quite well. I'm I'm not going to share my, I I've, I I got an email from somebody uh, a couple of days ago saying, "Why are you always talking about your vacations? Stop talking about your vacations. Stop showing your photos." Okay, fine. I don't want to bore anybody. Let's talk about Foxconn. Let's talk about the president's Twitter. So remember, uh. President Trump last week said Apple's going to build three bigly beautiful. Uh, factories in the United States. Apple went, huh? Uh, yep. <laughs> maybe they are, but some speculation is that maybe what uh, the president was thinking of is Foxconn, who makes the uh, iPhones. Actually, Foxconn's factory in Wisconsin. They admitted they they said yes, we're building a a multi billion dollar factory in Fo in uh, Wisconsin. Oh yeah, this is Trump's tweet. Uh, Tim Cook didn't promise anything. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, F Foxconn's going to make it for sharp TVs, not for iPhones. But anyway. <laughs> let's let's dig a little deeper because apparently Wisconsin is giving Foxconn a three billion dollar tax break, enough to buy everybody in Wisconsin an iPhone. And uh, so, really, the only person getting rich from this, according to Bloomberg Business Week, is Foxconn and its billionaire chairman Terry Gao. Um, and if you do look at the numbers, which they do in this article, uh, it seems like a pretty good deal for Foxconn. Maybe less of a good deal for the people of Wisconsin. Yeah. Also, also, Foxconn has a track record of making yeah. these amounts. So we're we're building these these plants, and like they did this in Brazil, they've done this other places in the United States. And three or four years later, the the tax credits came immediately. Yeah. But the actual jobs, they're still working on those, and it's still not actually happening. Yeah. So I, anything any news about how Foxconn is doing anything in the United States or the in, in the Americas? It's like. Okay, that's that's a, it's, 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 it's a nicely typed press release. I like your choice, choice of font. <laughs> uh, Foxconn, uh, Han Hai, the parent company of Foxconn, says it's going to spend $10 billion on the plant in Wisconsin. They've, they've never spent anything like that over the last... It's spent yeah. less than $9.5 billion over the past five years on uh, capital expenditures. So it's not... It seems like that would be a lot of money for them. A but, lot. But $3 billion tax credit. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's bingo. Thames negotiations. Yeah. Uh, did you see? We we've talked before, uh, and we've Apple's been dissed for its anemic GPUs and some of its high end uh, devices. But maybe there's a solution on the way. Uh, Nvidia has announced Quadro and Titan external GPU solutions. I th almost almost designed for MacBooks with Thunderbolt three. Uh, you connect these up to your um, your laptop. <laughs> it's it's actually bigger than your laptop, <laughs> <laughs> and you have suddenly a very very powerful uh, graphics processor. So uh, it's interesting. I think it's not really just Apple. I think a lot of uh, laptops absolutely laptops would benefit from this. It's funny though that these graphics professionals want to use laptops. 
they yeah they they want to use the machines they want to use right. uh, and it also gives them some portability and also it allows them to have the portability and be able to swap out cards wherever they want gaming is also a big deal where yeah. again you don't want to have to spend five thousand dollars on a laptop and then have to buy another five thousand dollar laptop two years later because you need right. that extra nanosecond well, in that's order a good to not point. get killed plus all the and, heat the, is outside of the laptop or if Absolutely. you're using an iMac and with power. Thunderbolt 3, this would make this would be a great choice for an iMac. For and power. Yeah. The, the great takeaway from this is that people think that USB that, that USB C is oh well it's a different type of connector for USB. It isn't. It's USB. If it's you actual USB C built to the spec that Intel has put together, not just this cheap little knockoff that appears on some uh, cut rate Windows notebooks. It really is like a totally new bus standard that has really no limits as to what kind of an accessory you can plug into a notebook. It makes notebooks almost this, give, it gives notebooks almost the same amount of credibility that any desktop uh, Mac or PC would have, because if I can get the, if I can get the, the, the RAID array uh, that gives the, the bandwidth that I need, if I can get graphics coprocessors, uh, that, the array that I need, if I can get five monitors hooked up to it, why am I necessarily sweating about the fact that this, box that I want to buy has no slots. Why don't I buy a really good notebook that can also be taken with me on jobs? And let's end with a on a happy note, shall we? <laughs> Apple is teaming up with the Australian company Cochlear. They do cochlear implants, uh, which are really miracles. Uh, I know a couple of people have had them. Maybe you saw the video on YouTube of a young girl, congenitally deaf, had never heard her mother's voice given a cochlear implant, which add, is basically something that replaces the cochlea in your ear, and obviously only certain kinds of deafness are treatable this way, attaches the, uh, the implant to a computer on your hip and a microphone, and suddenly you can hear for the first time. And remember that YouTube video? It was just amazingly moving to see this young uh, girl hearing her mother's voice for the first time. Vince Cerf talks about his wife, Annie, who was uh, deaf from birth, who has a cochlear implant and what a change it made for her. So uh, cochlear is going to make a, pr a processor now that will work with the iPhone, the iPad, the iPod Touch. So uh, I don't know if this replaces the uh, the iPhone or just, I mean, the uh, processor in the cochlear implant or if it just uh, makes the yeah. iPhone part of it. My my understanding is that it does use the the iPhone as for a lot of the processing. Wow, that's amazing! Uh, and so basically, it gives you it gives you essentially upgrades and no lock in for this one device. That's fantastic. I use yeah. um, my iPhone with my hearing aids because they're made for iPhone, and it's really great because you can actually make calls and hear the sound in your hearing aids. You can listen to books or music that way. It's not full fidelity; it's a hearing aid, but uh, it uh, the uh, hearing aids made for the iPhone with iPhone's assistive technologies work really really well. It's a really nice solution. See, this is what I, I find so impressive about Apple overall. It's not just things that, um, you know, we've got this new feature for for all of these people, and it's a cool little thing that they work on. I I, I really believe that Apple cares about I think you're right. Users. I think you're and, right. And I, I really like that. I think I really the medical uh, uses of the Apple Watch are another very, very good example of Apple. Yeah. Uh, because these are small businesses, they're not, they're probably not a huge number of people f from Apple's point of view, but it's still, it makes a difference in people's lives. Yes. And I respect that. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. We, we, we knock Apple sometimes, but, uh, I, I particularly knock Apple sometimes, but, uh, that is something they should be very much praised for. Let's take a break. Come back. Uh, We'll get a heavy metal pick of the week. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> You probably recognize Metallica right away. I did. <laughs> and, and a lot more coming up. But first a word from Rocket Mortgage. If you're buying a new home, if you're refinancing your old home, yeah, sure, you could go back to the 19th century, do it the way we used to do it a couple of years ago, go to a bank, hat in hand, ask a loan officer, please, sir, can I have some money? Pre present them with Bankers boxes full of paperwork. I actually was faxing. Yes, fa I had to find a fax machine. Faxing them documents. Uh, on our last time we did this, we went to a big bank. And it took them three months. Now you can do it in minutes from your phone or your tablet or your computer. 
without touching paper, without meeting anybody, you could do it all with Rocket Mortgage. Rocket Mortgage comes to us from Quicken Loans, the best mortgage lender in the country. And you can just see all those J.D. Power customers. Set. Number one in customer satisfaction year after year after year. Uh, that kind of proves the point. They really are beloved by their customers, both in mortgage origination and servicing. And they love us because they created something just for the geeks, an online mortgage approval process, which gives you, by the way, more than just fast. It's transparent. You know exactly what's going on. You, it, you can understand all the details. You can control it, too. You get to choose the, the term and the rate. And... You submit all, because of they have trusted partners in all the financial institutions, you submit all the financial information they need from the app, no faxing, no searching through the attic, and because it's all online, all through the computer, based on your income, assets, and credit, Rocket Mortgage can analyze all the options in minutes and find the one that's right for you. You'll literally get approved in minutes, not months. At Rocket Mortgage. Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Apply simply. Understand fully. Mortgage confidently. And all you have to do to get started is go to rocketmortgage.com slash MacBreak. Rocketmortgage.com slash MacBreak. They're an equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. And MLS Consumer Access .org, number 3030. From Quicken Loans. A product just for you and me. The geek. Rocketmortgage.com slash MacBreak. Break. Mr. D, Jim Dalrymple, loopinsight.com. He's I'm a rock and roll maven. I am ready for you. Yes, sir. Okay, so every time I come on, I do not really a metal and not a rock one, but in between, hard rock. Hard rock. Uh, Sorry, yeah, I'm do, not do, I'm not up in the terminology of the kids. No, I, okay. I, I, I want to make sure that I get something, a little something for everybody in here. So... This week's pick. Yes. I've been saving this one, too. Ooh. For, for you. <laughs> for us? Ooh. Yep, yep. Texas Hippie Coalition. <laughs> <laughs> when you say you were saving it, did you have it in your beard this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> Texas Hippie Coalition. So anybody that... It's has uh, got a great that, name. ...that likes any of the, the other choices that I've given them over, uh, you know, the times that I've been on the show will love Texas Hippie Coalition. Your on picks Apple have been music. absolutely right on every time. So yeah, is it kind of this. country rock? No, it's uh, it's bluesy, um, bluesy type hard rock. And the guy's voice, the guy that 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 uh, sings, his voice is just it's raspy and it's it's you know really um, strong. Oh yeah, look at that. He looks like Charlie's Daniels, but he. Let's hear See, how look he at sings. that guy. <laughs> I love it. There him. you go. Yeah. This is awesome. Oh, I love his voice. If you didn't see the video, you'd have you would be so shocked to see what they look like. That's awesome. I don't think anybody's going to argue with him that this is real rock. No, I this think is that's real rock. I think they're going to. Texas Hippie Coalition. Yeah. That's on YouTube, Apple Music, everywhere you want to be. Thank you, <laughs> Jim Dow. Jim, do you have any recordings we can listen to the Dalrymple collection or anything? Do you? I have I have hundreds of recordings in my iTunes library that I did over the years. Are you going to release those? You got to do a best of album or something. Best you know, of the beard. Maybe maybe someday. Oh, I'd love that. Best of the beard. I like it, Adam Angst. From tidbits.com. Your pick of the week, my friend. Man, I feel like I'm just going completely in the opposite direction here. <laughs> um, I just <laughs> So this this software comes from a Swiss company, <laughs> so I just I just somehow can't quite. Oh, the Swiss you know, rock! Like, Come on, yeah, no, not like that. They don't. <laughs> so, uh, Trip Mode Two, uh, Trip Mode Two. It's a it's a it's a wonderful little app. Um, second version has been you know it's new, but what this thing does is it lets you control by the network that you were attached to oh. what different 
network enabled apps can operate at all oh. so for instance and i i was on a trip uh when very shortly after this came out and uh the the hotel wi-fi was totally shot and i had to use my iphone for tethering totally fine but when you hook a mac up to an iphone for tethering you got to watch the data because dropbox or crash plan or those kind of icloud those kinds of things uh, icloud photo library they can just eat your data for lunch. I mean, it can go really quickly. Oh, yeah. And so what Trip Mode 2 does is when it sees a new network, it says, what do you want to use on this network? And and everything, you have to approve everything specifically as it asks for permission. Dropbox says, hey, I'd like, you know, I want to start syncing something. Trip Mode puts up, you know, let's say that you want a lot of Dropbox. And so you get to control that. And then it remembers for each network. So if you periodically switch between ah. networks of different bandwidth capabilities, you can say, uh, okay, I, I am allowing Dropbox on this one, but I'm not allowing Dropbox on this other one, or Crash Plan just isn't necessary at this point, you know, whenever I'm connected to this network. So um, it's it's a brilliant little app. Uh, I, honestly, I don't remember the first sort of what's changed often enough. I have to look at the look back at the uh, at the PR and whatnot. But uh, for anyone who travels, and particularly anyone who tethers to an iPhone, it is an absolutely essential little thing to uh, avoid running through your data cap. It is not uh, available on the Mac App Store because it uses a kernel extension that's not allowed. Yeah. Is it on the iPhone App Store? No, no. it's a Mac so only. So you have app. to put it on the Macintosh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and basically, I mean, and this is I used to do this also. Um, a couple of years ago, I had to drop my son off at cross-country practice, and it didn't make sense to drive home, so I had to sit in the car and work on the school's network. Oh, and wow. It was, it, was a, it was a useful thing there, too, because that network didn't have a lot of bandwidth, and I was you know, on a laptop. I just didn't want anything else going on while I was working. So you know, I got all these little custom uh, network configurations, and it just does it automatically. So you know, it's, I don't know if you remember Location Manager back in the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's right. <laughs> Yep. I forgot sort of about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the important stuff a location manager. Yeah. It's the that did things. But this is this is what you really care about because it costs you money in the end. Right. Well, this doesn't cost much. $8 uh, on the Macintosh. One, and, one data overage, is, it's paid for. Yeah. And they have a bundle if you want to get it on your Mac and your PC. Uh, you can. Do and it both. comes in SetApp for anyone who uh, subscribes to SetApp, which is the 10, 10 bucks a month. And uh, you get access to like oh. 70 apps. Oh, yeah. Is this worth doing? I think, yeah, I talked about setup back in January when they were just beta testing it. Um, setup is an interesting situation. Um, they curate very heavily, so the apps in there are really good apps, which is what you want. I mean, that's great. The only issue is not quite clear. I, I just did an article about it, I don't know. Three, 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 four weeks ago, it's not quite clear if it's being lucrative enough for the developers uh -huh. because it's one of those chicken and egg things. They need yeah. to get enough people, and it's but what happens? So trip mode will always be in that folder. I mean, it doesn't go away. When you subscribe to set up the, I mean, apps you have to have keep only paying set up every month for all yeah. eighty-one apps to work, but they don't change out apps. No, okay. in theory, the apps have all committed to be there. I guess it's a year at least, but okay. realistically, no one's going to take something out because they're, if nothing else, they're not losing money, right? right. They might not be making as much. But right. um, what I've talked to the developers who are in there, they basically say they're not making as much as they would like, yeah. uh, but they think that it's just still early days. I mean, it's only been out for five months. This has a pretty good, I do remember you talking about this last time you were on, but this yeah. is a pretty good set of, of apps in here for, what, how much? It's six bucks a month? Nine, nine ninety nine. Nine, ten bucks a month. So if you so saw three or four apps in there that you wanted, this would be worth it. Yeah, so uh, it, and there's some stuff. I mean, Ulysses is there, yeah. um, um, Eon Timeline, um, Merlin Project Express. Um, I really like iStat Menus. So I love I just, menus, yeah. Precisely. And yeah. this is and, and what I found actually, which is kind of funny, is is that there's all these times when I'll be at a conference or something like that, and someone will have this problem and I'm like, well, 
I know how to solve it, and there's an app in set app that will do it. So some right. guy wanted to do a YouTube clip, which he needed to download and convert to a movie so that he could put it into Keynote because it wasn't working for some reason as a YouTube clip. And I was like, yeah, Downey will do that. So I, you know, basically launched set up, downloaded the app. You know, he gave me his 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 thing. I, you know, I gave him a movie file back. He popped it in Keynote, and he was super happy. So you know, saved his bacon. Right. You know. And you didn't have to pay anything because you already own, in effect, own that app. Yeah. I mean, I would never have gone out and bought an app to do right. that one thing, but right. I was going to download Downey once and use it right then and there for that that this feature. A, I hope they do well. This is a very interesting idea. It's it's it, they're a good company, the MacPaw yeah. folks. Um, yeah. They're Ukrainian, um, and they just they're really they're solid. They're thinking hard. They've been improving it, and 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 they're really being very careful about what they take. So you know, yeah. this is not Mac App Store. I I really like them. So you can so either buy Trip Mode company. standalone for eight bucks, or if you yep. are a set app user, you can try it out for free because of your set app subscription. Andy Anako's pick of the week. Uh, this is a free VNC app called Real VNC. Ooh, uh, yes, you know what VNC is? It's the ability to remote access one computer from another device. Uh, made ten times more awesome in modern ages because now you can remote access a Mac from a phone. Uh, I can remote access a Mac or Windows machine from a twenty-five dollar, uh, twenty-five dollar Raspberry Pi. Uh, and it's a it, you just install this app this this uh, this app on whatever machine you want to control. Uh, you can then download a client app that lets you again access that app from uh, access that device from wherever you want to go. And uh, because there is a sort of like a central, if you, you you set up an account on Real VNC, and it will be able to communicate to a central server. Here is what my the IP address of this particular Mac is on the internet right now, because your ISP will keep keep changing the IP addresses. So it means that you can be in a hotel room and decide that oh wow, taking just my iPad Mini was such a bad idea because I can't do the work I need to do with just my iPad apps. Uh, and so you can just simply through the crappy hotel internet, uh, connect back to your uh, connect back to your iMac, uh, run, run an app in a full screen mode, and just simply have everything that you need to do over there. It's even useful if you just want that little belt and suspenders problem of I think I've taken all the files that I need to, for this trip. I think I, I I need I think I've got all the files in my Dropbox, but you forgot one thing, so you can go back. So I can go back to your 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 Windows machine or your Mac machine, copy that into Dropbox. You got it good. Uh, it's 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 also neat because there's so many places in the house if you have a larger family where you feel like it would be nice to have an iMac in the TV room as a, in addition to the, the the bedroom in the office, but you don't want to go out and spend five six seven to a thousand to two thousand dollars on another Mac. But you know what you do again you can't afford twenty five bucks or thirty bucks for a Raspberry Pi or maybe you have an old laptop uh, kicking around from from ages ago and so you, you don't have to be able to run the full power of that Mac app you can just run this little very very so sophisticated little client app that will let you have full keyboard and mouse control really uh, there is a little bit of latency the you can sometimes tell that you're watching a video stream as opposed to a live U, a UI being backed by hardware graphical acceleration. Yes, but after about the first five minutes, you don't really notice that it's it's just a Mac or it's just a Windows machine or it's just a Raspberry Pi. Uh, so uh, and it's free. Uh, they will they will start charging you if you want the more professional features. It's free for personal and home use, uh, which means that it's missing some of the features that they would want to charge you forty dollars a year. Uh, or more for things like being able to do uh, uh, multi-factor authentication, things like being able to just drag files from one place to another, access a remote printer, stuff that really isn't that important for people who, once again, they just want to be able to run Mac apps on their iPad, for instance, or they just want to be able to be able to uh, be in bed and they don't feel like getting out of bed, but the only machine, that the only computer they have with them right now is the company-issued Windows machine, but they want to run their Mac apps <laughs> from the from the computer that's in their home office, uh, it's it's worth it. I would I will caution that even though it is free, it's not worth putting it on every machine that you might conceivably want to remote access because it does introduce a security hole just by definition. It is it's enabling remote access to a machine. Doesn't matter how secure it is through this app. It's a it's a vulnerability that would not exist if you had not uh, installed this app. Uh, I don't keep it running all the time on all my machines, and there's only one machine that I even turn it on when I leave. Uh, but uh, definitely worth playing around with. Again, it is pretty freaky when 
Like I, I have run Mac OS on this tiny, tiny little, little screen on this little like cigarette pack size device. And oh my God, it's, it's, it's a scene, man. It's, it's quite a scene, man. It's funny. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that must be hard to use. Hey, you mentioned before Andy folding keyboards. I, I, which one do you use? I was just curious. Uh, I just got one. And I, 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 I thought I'd make this a recommendation, but I don't want to overlap. This is go, go ahead and recommend it. I've, I've got a box labeled mobile keyboards. That I've met <laughs> I, well, I was in. curious. This one is called is from iClever. It's uh, forty dollars. Although if you want a touchpad, it's ten dollars more. It's backlit, which I really like. In fact, you can choose from red, green, or blue uh, backlighting, and it works great with the uh, iPad Pro. But any Bluetooth device. Look how small it is. Uh, it came in that little, uh, so small enough that you could stick it in your briefcase. It unfolds to a pretty decent, uh, solid, frankly, better than the <laughs> MacBook Pro keyboard uh, that has some real travel. It has all the keys. The only negative on it is that the shift key is oddly, on the right, is oddly placed in tiny. And I keep hitting the page up instead of the shift key. But this is the iClever. And I think for 40 bucks, it's a handy thing to have if you use an iPad or an iPhone. Uh, look at that. You got a whole box of them. Yeah, I I, I didn't lie because I uh, I tried to buy <laughs> pretty much every every keyboard that I could possibly is there, find. Is there much of them. a difference between them? This is the only one I've ever tried. I would I would definitely say so. As a matter of fact, this is I uh, I think there is a company through Alibaba or whatever. It looks that's like the these. iClever exactly like the iClever. Yeah, this is called the X Folding Triple. You can buy oh, it. Oh, but they don't make the same mistake with the Shift key. They have swapped the Shift yeah. key and the question mark key. And they've done it appropriately. What's the name of that one? I might have to buy that one instead. Uh, they call they call this one the iNote. Uh, iNote on the back, but it says X folding triple. But You're yeah, right. There's is, one company that makes all of these. Obviously. But I but I have to say that this is my. If you have to have something that folds in a shirt pocket, yeah. this is my favorite kind because the idea of having the central bed of it. Yes. Um, uh, it's very solid. Yeah. And it's it feels very, very good. It's small. It's about the size of your premium phone, so it works really great. This is that is uh, identical to the one I have, except they've just moved yeah. the keys around. That's all. There was yeah, there there was some controversy uh because a company on Kickstarter had a keyboard that was gonna fold four times, come almost, almost like a, a, a folding a folding stepladder. Uh and they were unable to make their original design work for scale. And then they came out with something that was this. And then a again it showed up on like Alibaba. So there's some controversy as yeah. to Did they really whether invent anything. <laughs> did, well well the it's I, I I was unable to verify one way or another. It's possible they they said that they designed it and then these factories ripped it off, which is definitely possible in China. People who were had waited years and years and years for this really delayed product that looked nothing like what they originally had funded right. were saying maybe you just had someone put a sticker on something. Right. I don't know which one, but all I can all I can say is I, I would. It's a distinction for me because if they did invent this technology, I would like to spend twice as much money and it's make sure that the real manufacturer yeah. gets it. Uh, lacking any proof, I. This is too good a keyboard for me to say I'm, I refuse to use it until I know for sure this wasn't stolen technology. There might be an ethical problem with there. But again, it literally, I do not know what the story is. And I've been trying to find out uh, about this. Yeah. But yeah, this is my favorite style of keyboard. Also, it really does look like a like a bridge if you look at it from the side. I and mean, that's that is that is like a suspension bridge sort of hinge. But so very pretty. Well, there's a couple of choices for you. I, I can't find the iNote on um, on uh, Amazon. But I can only f again they're 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 going to be anywhere. And if anybody wants to a, a good deal on second rate uh, folding keyboards, I, <laughs> I, I, can, I, 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 I can help you. I can I can only ship about twenty orders of second rate folding keyboards. Wow! Remember 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 that remember this piece of work, the typo. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. The Ashton oh, Kutcher boy. inspired design. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, yeah. God bless your heart for keeping the, the, the keeping the, the, the phone clicky keyboard. I can't going. believe you bought that. Well, I guess it's your job, isn't it? Uh, I, uh, especially, especially when it's something that looks like the dumbest thing you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> I feel like I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to not be able to say this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And so my price of entry to be able to say this is the dumbest idea ever was to buy this and then actually use it for a few days and verify dumbest thing that I've actually used. Yeah, this is yeah. kind of the yeah. dumbest thing ever. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have concluded this edition, this thrilling, gripping edition of MacBreak Weekly. 
thrilling and gripping because in 12 minutes, Apple's quarterly results will come out. And we, and that's they, where I'm heading. And they, they keep doing that to us. Well, I'm glad Jim is there and you can read his insights on loopinsight.com. Thank you, Jim Dalrymple, for joining us. Thank you, Larry. Always a pleasure to have you. Always enjoy being here. Thank I'll, you. Come back anytime. Don't hide any more apps in your beard. <laughs> Just bring them to us. Or bands. Uh, Andy Anako is at the Chicago Sun-Times and makes his appearance here each week and in other places, too, including... Uh, uh, where where are you living these days with your other shows? Uh, is is it Re at Relay it out Relay, FM? Relay FM. We, okay. do, uh, we do the Google show. I'm, if you're in Boston, I'm also going to be on uh, Boston Public Radio again on Friday, uh, probably talking about DEF CON and other cool stuff. Uh, I will also... I, I'll, I will make one prediction for the sales call, uh, for the uh, analyst call. I predict that Apple will at least once and maybe even twice use the phrase, we love the Mac, we love the Mac and we've got wonderful things planned for it. <laughs> but we have nothing more to say at this time. Someday. We're still working on that Mac Pro. Remember, we had complete, to go all, all the way I back. Complete, <laughs> I have complete faith in our new in the new communications director. <laughs> <sighs> hey, you know what? Wow. That might be a good job for the mooch. <laughs> there you I go. Think about that. <laughs> Director Apple needs somebody here. who could tell it like it is. I uh, also want to thank Adam Engst. Tidbits.com, the world's best, longest running, <laughs> and completely typed by hand Macintosh <laughs> no newsletter. No AI involved. Yep. And we will also have uh, uh, results from the, from the call uh, shortly after it's done. I was glad we could get all of you off and so you could get a little snack before it all begins. The fun begins in about 10 minutes. The email Sounds goes good. out in 10 minutes, and then the call is at about uh, 40 minutes. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. We do Mac Break Weekly every Tuesday right after iOS today. That's our new, uh, that's our new partner in crime here. So tune in at 9 a.m. Pacific for iOS today, and then 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC for Mac Break Weekly. If you want to join us in the studio, email tickets at twit.tv. We'll put a chair out for you. If you would like to watch the stream, it's on twit.tv slash live. And when you are watching live, please join us in the chat room at irc.twit.tv. You wouldn't want to miss the conversation going on there while the conversation's going on here. It's always a lot of fun. Uh, and let's see, what else? Oh, subscribe. You know, you can get the show audio and video downloads available at twit.tv slash mbw. But if you subscribe, you'll get every episode kind of automatically in whatever it is you use to subscribe to um, podcasts. So please do. Thank you for being here. And now I'm sad to say it's time to get back to work because break time is over. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.